Exactly, like even if we stand, if we stand down there, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And like what I can do is like I can, I could always be kind of talking my way yeah. on the way down just yeah. to keep the continuity going. Yeah. 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 That's fine for a little.
Hello and welcome to Moran Abbey for this afternoon's Bon Secours Cork Premier Intermediate Football Championship clash which pitched Kilimartra against uh, Nacht Nagri. The Gaeltic side are in the box seat in Group B having won both their games 
and boast an impressive scoring difference. Their opponents not agree, know that they must get a result here this afternoon if they are to progress to the knockout stages and they will be keeping a close ear to the happenings in the group's other clash between Neva Bourne and St Vincent's. The former Cork manager Brian Cutberth and the Irish Examiner Sports Editor Tony Lean and are, are alongside me in commentary duties this afternoon and we will hear from them in due course. But first, it is time to check in with our two camps. A little earlier in the week, I spoke to a very dapper Nagree boss, John Fenton Daly. But first, let's hear the thoughts of the Kilnamatra Bonnestor, Kivin O'Sullivan, who was speaking a little earlier in the week to Tony. I'm joined now by Kevin O'Sullivan, uh, ahead of training in Kilnamatra. Kevin, it's the week uh, of a very big game. I know it's still a group game, and I know you're four points out of four, but there's a lot of eyes on Kilnamatra in the Premier Intermediate Championship, and I suppose that's a compliment in, in itself. Is it fair that there's a lot of expectation on you? Um, I suppose it is, really. Um, look, I suppose it's our second year up in Premier Intermediate. We won the Lower Intermediate there two years ago. Um, our first year up, we got to, we were playing Division One football. Um, we got to the Keller Shield final last year, you know. Um, so we're kind of progressing all the time. Look, we've a good band of players. Um, uh, we were very good under 21 team there about three years ago. We got to county final. We lost to Douglas, which was a very good Douglas team. So that team is kind of coming together now, and we still have the blend of, we'll say, the likes of Noel O'Leary, Sean Keller, Martin Connors, these older guys that have played for years. So you know we're in a good place at the moment, all mm. right. To be fair, um, but look, um, we've two games played, we've two games won, and you know Saturday night will be very important to us as well. It's a you know psychologically, you don't have to win. They do have to win. Is that something that you're conscious of in terms of it being a problem? Um, I don't really because I suppose where we're at at the moment, we're probably the highest ranked team of the three groups. So for us, if we can win on Saturday, we're probably guaranteed of a semi-final. So we're treating it as a county quarter final. If we win it, we're into the semi-final. Yes. Um, so for us, it's all to play for. If we lose, okay, we have that cushion of being into quarters. But the prize of, uh, of winning on Saturday is straight into the semi-final, which you know, we're treated as a county quarter final. Is it an ambition of Kilnamartra to play senior football, senior championship football in Cork? It certainly is. Um, I'd be lying to you if, 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 if we hadn't discussed it. Um, we certainly have a team with an age profile young enough to build from here over the next three to four years um, to definitely try and compete for that. Um, like I said before, we are playing um, Keller Shield football at the moment and we're, you know, we did quite well in it first year up. We, we got to the final. You know, obviously, that final against the Bears was a, a great lesson for us that day. You know, the standard that they brought of speed, uh, strength and conditioning, you know, tactical now all those things you know we got a bit of a schooling that day mm. but we still didn't do too bad you know so it's always a learning progress for, process for us um, but definitely look I'd be lying to you if we didn't have ambitions of playing at a higher level than we're currently at and yet you only won the intermediate grade is it two years ago so I mean you're only at this level and already you look a side that's very comfortable Kevin at premier intermediate level so you're not far off senior I suppose we are. Um, look, I suppose while I was playing, um, we were at the lower intermediate grade for about 15 years before we actually won it. Mm. You know, um, a lot of years that we were down there, we had good teams. Noel O'Leary in his prime, um, we had Sean Keller, we had we had Colm Leary in his prime. You know, we would really good players and we had a favourites tag before in that, but we just couldn't get over the line. We couldn't win the championship. Unfortunately, I didn't win it as a player. Um, but we always had ambitions to, you know, play at a higher level and do and 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 you know compete. But I suppose the fact that this new age of player that has come in, this underage team, the, the likes of Michael Desmond, Dan O'Donnell, dumb guys have won everything underage. Mm. So like they play with really no fear and they didn't have the baggage that we always had when we were trying to win stuff. So when we did get to that final against Abolook two years ago, for them it was just another day out in, in, in Parky Creef. Whereas when we were playing and we got to a couple of finals that we lost to Carrigal Line and Carrigal Rangers and teams, we probably had that bit of baggage that you know we couldn't get over the line. Um, but for them it seemed easy, they just played with no fear and you know mm. that has really helped us as a club. For anybody who's watching today's action, of course, from outside Cork, I mean, the best known player on the field will still be Noel O'Leary. I mean, and... 
I mean, not alone is he a great character and a great footballer, but tell us what type of a role model and what type of influence he is. I mean, he's playing centre-back. Is he 37 or 8 at this stage? He's 38, um, but it's very hard to quantify the influence that he has on the team, OK? Look, a lot of people from outside our group would suggest that he's past it, you know, that his legs are gone. A lot of teams try to put a runner on him from the start at 11, um, move him around um, and stuff like that. But Noel's a competitor, a massive competitor. Um, you know, like last year, we were, as a management group, we were probably going to move on because we had our three years done and we felt, you know, maybe a new voice was the right way to go. But look, I met with Noel and he felt that if we stayed on for one more year, he felt that there was another year in him, mm. you know, especially when things came to a sudden end against Cantor last year. So, look, he's, he's a great competitor. He brings a massive high standard to training. Mm. You know, he's a great speaker on the pitch. It's like having another selector, really. Um, you know, you can bounce ideas off him. When he's on the pitch, he brings that bit of calm, you know, in around the middle, in around centre-back. If you need to close out a game, you can drop in front of a full forward line. Um, mm. And he's very secure. Like So, look, we, he's playing great stuff for us. Um, and as long as he's doing it for us in, in the games and doing it for us at training, look, age is a number, as they say. Yeah. Well, it's a bit of a cliche. But if he's doing it, like, you know, he'll be playing. Now, John Fenton, thank you so much for joining us. Beautiful scenery in the background. And as I said, you're probably the most uh, dapper-looking manager that we've uh, we've had the pleasure of speaking to ahead of a championship game. Uh, we get on to the match itself in a few moments' time. I want to ask you, I suppose, uh, maybe it's a strange question, but was COVID and was the break good and badly needed for Nocknagree, given how long you've been on the road together? Yeah, well, I suppose nobody wants a break like that, Colm, you know. Um, we, in reality, I suppose, uh, like all GA guys, they love being out playing, and I suppose it's all about playing the game and training, and the not just the winning and the losing column, I suppose, it's a sense of belonging and uh, just the, the, love, the love of the game itself, and uh, they miss that a lot. And, uh, of course, their friends and their whole lives revolve around that kind of emotional contact, I suppose, you know. So... Um, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it's an unintended result of it that we got a bit of a break, you know. Um, but we we got a we got a, an unwelcome break in 2018 because after winning the All Ireland, we we got uh, beaten by the Barrows in the quarter final, and that was uh, that certainly built up the hunger for 2019. And I suppose we never stopped, and we kept going in 2019. And the break this year has had an impact for everybody. But uh, to answer your question, I suppose it probably is a help. Although if you ask the squad of players, they prefer it didn't happen. Okay, well, as you said, that remarkable journey. I know there was the, the blip against the bars, but like a junior title all the way to an All Ireland, then an intermediate title subsequently, and here we are now in a, a very new look uh, Cork Championship. Have you enjoyed the experience of the group games? Oh yeah, I, I tell you, in an ordinary year, and it was the, the, the credit here must go to Kevin O'Donovan's foresight because he obviously had this very well thought out. And with these final games, the weekend, and they've been played simultaneously, he has thought of every eventuality because every team that's left, I think, is something to play for. Score differences, the whole thing is very transparent and it's certainly, the feedback is very good. The system is very good. Uh, mind you, I prefer to be going to Saturday without having to win the game, but we find ourselves in that position and that's the way it is. You know, it's, it's a real championship game for us because it's all or nothing for us. But is that a help, though, John Fenton, in the fact that you need to know exactly what you have to achieve on Saturday, as opposed to what if different permutations came into play from other matches? Oh, yeah, I suppose it is. It, focuses, it certainly focuses the mind. And uh, we wouldn't have wanted to be going into this game having to get a, a result against Kilimatra, because, you know, uh, Kilimatra would be... I suppose they'll be ahead, they're down the road ahead of us. They have uh, travelled this road before us and uh, they're a very accomplished team. And, you know, I suppose they go in as favourites into most games they play. They're very, very mature and um, we would have used them as an example for the development of our team. Our team is a bit younger um, and even you mentioned the long road we've been on, Column, we have very carefully and consistently in, in introduced younger players into our team. So the team that will play on Saturday and the team that has played in this championship will have up to six players on it that will not have played in Crow Park. So it's a younger team and we move on. And um, i just like to say here, I, I think, uh, I suppose there's credit uh, to us. Very similar to Kilnamatra in the mentality because they have a small parish. We have a population of about 600 souls. We're right here on the Kerry border. 
And as you speak to me, you can see the, the cloud-covered paths in the background. That we are, we are, we are a third of a parish. I think we're the only club in Cork or the 260 odd clubs in the parish from another county in the parish of Atmore. So um, I think there's fair credit due to, to what we've done in the last three years because with a, with a small population, we've managed to put out three championship teams again this summer. And the South Authority are doing it. So we played championship, I think, against St. Vincent on a Sunday. We played junior B championship on the following Friday. And on the August bank holiday Sunday, our junior B team played championship. We put out 56 players in just seven days. And um, Kilimanjaro have done that too. Uh, you know, but I think it's the miracle of the loaves and the fishes. And uh, a club of our size should not be competing like this. Or, you know, we have done well, but obviously there's still a lot of ambition there going forward. Yeah, it's an incredible story. How how do you maintain that, John Fenton? How do you keep something like that on the road, keep the hunger, the desire, the interest across three teams, considering the pick that you have? Yeah, it's very small, but um, there's a genuine uh, love for the game and for the club. And uh, the, the players uh, the players are, 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 are very respectful of themselves and of their management and of the community we, we represent. So, um, you know, it's the only game we play, Colum. I, I thought I could be telling the story of Kilimanjaro here because it's very, very similar. We, 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 I think the model is very similar. So, um, you know, it's going to be a Titanic battle because uh, this would be, these would be a better team than most we've met. Um, but look, isn't that what we're there for? We want to play at a higher level and uh, we've come through from last year. And um, you keep asking the big questions and there's more big questions coming up for next Saturday. Okay, final question though that I'm going to have to ask you is, this game on Saturday, unfortunately, there won't be any fans from Nochnagri. There won't be any fans from Kilimanjaro. There won't be any fans at all there. I know it's something that you've raised in some press interviews in the last number of days. You've been questioning why that is the case? Absolutely, Colm. And let me take the opportunity now to say that we're very thankful and delighted that the examiner picked this game to do live stream because it's such a help to support us on both sides. But I just feel that it's it's all about optics. I, I don't believe for a second that the uh, people, that we, a small number of people we've had at all games nationally, in any way represent a uh, COVID threat. I think the scientists will tell you that the, the chances of getting COVID in an outdoor setting are 19 times less than indoor. And when you consider the, 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 the small number of supporters at games, I think it's more about optics. Uh, I don't think there's anything to say that a small number of supporters going to GA games has in some way contributed to the spread of the virus. If we thought that for a second, we wouldn't be playing the game at all. You know, we all got locked down for quite a long time. It is difficult because for every club, it's about community. And, you know, it isn't just about going out and winning. It's about going out and winning and having the support of your community, whether you win or lose. But uh, most of this will be done online on, on Saturday. People will watch it online. And it, it is a pity, but look, we're just glad to be playing Colin. That's all I can say, because a while ago, it looked like we wouldn't be playing at all. So we're not going to complain about it. We're just delighted to get the opportunity. Hopefully that um, this championship, I know it started, will it be finished is the question. Hopefully this championship will be finished. And we just want to give it our best shot because we know we're up against it here. And our thanks to the two managers for their time during the week. Brian Cuthbert has joined me here in uh, Moran Abbey up in our uh, commentary position. It was nice and sunny leaving Bishopstown about an hour ago. It's uh, a bit cooler and there's a bit of a breeze here in Moran Abbey. Yeah, absolutely, Colm. Um, always in this pitch, I find that obviously playing down here into the into the city side of the the ground is uh, the wind obviously seems to be blowing that way, and the pitch kind of falls this way as well. But uh, really looking forward to a very, very, very big game here. Um, you know, I, I think I, I absolutely either team could win this one quite easily, um, and I think uh, you know, really look, as I say, really looking forward to it. Okay, well, we'll get the uh, Kilnamatra team there up on our screen. No changes uh, from uh, the team we were given during the week. We just run through it there. Uh, Antonio Connell in goals. Donna McLaughlin, Graham O'Mahon, Ona Lynchig, the uh, full back line. Tygo Corker, Nola Golera at uh, centre back, and Danny O'Connell in the wing. And Garod uh, Goalee, Sean O'Farre at midfield. Kirano Dunin, Mihalo Dasuna, Chris Doro, Mard in the half forward line, and it's uh, Damien O'Rdle, Daniel O'Dunin, and Shane O'Dunin in the uh, full forward line. Uh, Nola Golera. Still there, still doing the business. Absolutely, um, you know, the height of respect for the man, the fact he's, he's you know, even when he was at Cork, I, I think his club was still a, a huge part of his life. Sometimes guys who play inter-county, you know, they, they can actually disappear from their club for a while, but certainly Nolly was always a guy, I'd, I would think that uh, his club was, was that, you know, very much part of the of his household and he was very much part of his own community. 
Um, it'd be interesting to see Colum if they actually leave him at centre back. I've seen Kilimanjaro a few times, and they actually play him up centre forward as, as a kind of a, a playmaker and, and to use his experience. So it'd be interesting, as I say, certainly when they're playing up against the wind, whether they leave him as an out and out centre back. So that's going to be interesting. Okay, some uh, big scores as well too in the game against uh, Saint Vincent, uh, a man we've seen before, Michal Odasuna at uh, centre forward, and uh, Shane O'Donin at corner forward, hitting one three against Vincent. Yeah, um, I, I've seen Michal Odasuna play quite a lot. I saw him. I think he was a Cork minor in about 2000 and maybe 14, 15, that kind of time. Um, an absolute beautiful striker of the ball. Um, I've seen him score frees off the ground from 50 yards out at times. So I'm interested to see how he plays. And uh, I'm also very, very interested in seeing the other Deneen as well, Dana Deneen. There's been a huge amount to talk about him in Cork football circles for maybe the last four or five years. He's never played Cork senior. Um, and a lot of people speak about his abilities and a uh, decision I'd say he took a couple of years ago that he went to concert in his club, so I'm, I'm interested to see how he gets on today. OK, we'll bring up the uh, Knock Negri team there now on uh, on your screen there to the right of us here. They'll be wearing a navy strip, by the way, because of the colour clash uh, today, so Knock Negri will be wearing navy and uh, Kilimanjaro in their traditional white and blue. Running through the team very quickly, Patrick Doyle, uh, the full-back line, Michael Doyle, Daniel O'Mahony, Gary O'Connor, uh, the half-back line, Danny Cooper, Keelan Buckley, Michael Mahoney, uh, David O'Connor and Donna Moynihan at uh, midfield, Garod Looney, Owen McSweeney, Fenton O'Connor, the half-forward line, Dennis O'Connor, John Fenton Daly, that's John Fenton Daly Jr., of course, and Matthew Dilworth will be wearing number 15. This really is make or break for Nocknagri today. Uh, they have to get a result here. Yeah, and I was thinking about this column. I think sometimes in, in, in Gaelic games, when, when they're going to steer ahead and you have to perform, I, I think good teams come up and perform. Uh, it's going to be, you know, Kilimartra, they're qualified already. Uh, this idea of, you know, trying to top the group, get straight into the semi-final, that, that's an incentive. But when it's do or die, and I think we're all rare in this do or die championship, I think sometimes it brings out an extra element in you. So for me, not agree, have a slight advantage in here going into the game because they know, they absolutely know that, uh, you know, if Alivorni uh, do, the, uh, do the business uh, against Vincent's, that you know, they're in trouble, so they have to perform. We're going to bring uh, Tony Lean uh, in there alongside, and, and Tony's been crunching the numbers. We'll get the uh, group tables up on screen there as well. You'll have a, a busy 60 minutes or so. I hope you had uh, a good maths teacher back in the day. No, I think Brian's point there, Colm, is, is very relevant. I mean, it, you know, if this was literally, uh, if this was a county final between the two teams, I'd actually fancy Kilnamarta to win. You know, I think, I think one of the reasons that there's so much kind of interest and excitement around this game, and this is around Cork, by the way, this isn't just these two, because I know I've been talking to people during the week and they've been eyeing this game out. And it's for two reasons. Number one, they're both really good footballing teams. Teams, so we should have a really good game of football. Secondly, everyone you talk to says one or both of these is going to be a senior football team in the next kind of two to three years. You know, and as I said, Kilnamart are probably just that year or two ahead in terms of their development than not agree. But I think Brian makes the very fair point. If I was a supporter, I'd nearly prefer to be a Nottingham supporter here today because Kilnamartra are through. And I know I was down in, in Kilnamartra and I was talking to Kevin O'Sullivan, the manager, during the week, and he was emphasising the fact we want to get straight through to the semi-final. And you could see even out on the pitch Tuesday night he was telling them that. But John Finton Daly has a different message for his players. That's, lads, it's shit or bust. If we don't win today, we're gone. OK, just looking across the tables there, we have them, uh, of course, uh, up on screen there at the moment. Uh, some... This being, of course, the game that we're most focused on. Uh, New Market looking more than likely. Well, well they're the other team. I mean, if, if you were to say on current form, then you would say that the two teams who would go straight into the semi-finals are New Market and Kilnamartra. They're the ones in the box seat. They're the ones, and you know, where everything is in their own hands at the moment. If they win today, I mean, Nemo are top of the third table. I actually think they've overachieved. Mm. I really do. I think this is Nemo's second team. Mm. I think with the best will in the world, and I don't mean this in any disparaging way. I think they caught Cantork. They got a couple of early goals. Cantork were on the way back. They couldn't get back to them in the end. I think that's a very stiff test for Nemo today against McCroom, obviously. McCroom's first team, you know, so I wouldn't it wouldn't amaze me to hear that McCroom actually would beat Nemo in that game. So I do think certainly that in terms of straight through to the semis, it's in Kilnamartra's hand and it's very much in Newmarket's hands. Yeah, I'd absolutely concur with that, Tony. I, I think you know, in in this game, to be fair to to Kildare you know how how you get a team right 
you know, facing to the fact that you, you've qualified already, yeah. it's, it's quite difficult in terms of the psyche that we all are, as I say, are reared on. But I suppose this, this year's championship has been so different and, and living in, in Ireland has been so different and living across the world has been so different that I think everyone just accepts that this is where we are right now. And I think, to be fair to Kilimartra, I, I, I think I've seen them playing in the Keller Shield Division 1 and I've seen them actually beat uh, seasoned senior teams. Mm. So they're certainly at that standard. And I think the experience that they've had in the last two or three years in terms of Keller Shield is going to stand to them right through this championship. And I think... Went in you know, the final couple Yeah, year, the bars, yeah. they play the bars in the Keller Shield final. Which is a huge... Yeah, team. and I, I think, you know, they've, they've, they have a real chance of going very, very far in this championship. We're going to have a minute silence now for the late Eileen Hickey, former proprietor of the Central Bar in Knocknagree. And uh, Eileen's sons, Morris and Berthy, both uh, played with uh, Knock Negri. And uh, we extend our sympathies to them and to their uh, the extended Hickey family at this uh, sad time. I'm referee this afternoon, you just heard him there, was uh, Cahal Egan. Falling into place, uh, Knock Negri will be playing from right to left. And as I said, uh, they will be wearing their second strip, their uh, navy blue and uh, the men of Kilimatra will be wearing their traditional uh, white and blue strip. I want a very quick mention there just before we get underway. Uh, Brendan, who's a huge Knocknagree fan and a huge favourite of the players in the panel, just uh, want to uh, say a big hello to him watching us, I believe, this afternoon. And uh, just uh, the lads in the uh, squad asked me to uh, say hello to you, Brendan. And uh, hopefully you'll be smiling in an hour's time as well this afternoon. We're off and underway in this uh, Bon Secours Cork Premier Intermediate uh, Football Championship clash at uh, beautiful Moran Abbey uh, this afternoon. Pitch in absolutely immaculate uh, uh, condition. First uh, blood there is for the uh, full forward Daniel O'Donnell, the man that uh, Brian was mentioning a few moments ago in his uh, pre-match. Nice offload by him and a nice uh, point on the run by the uh, wing forward over there, Christor Omar. But uh, as uh, Brian was pointing out, uh, this guy, Daniel O'Donnell, a quantity surveyor, is uh, a man to keep an eye on. <coughs> Distinctive blue boots by him, but uh, nice presence to offload there. Noli O'Leary there, Noli Golera, wearing number six in his back. Will he uh, maintain that position? He's going to be pushing more forward, I think. Yeah, I, I think from the get-go, um, Kilimartra put all out wing back. Ty Cockery's in and on McSweeney, and, and to be fair, I remember a league game a couple of years ago with Cork uh, against Donegal where Owen Sweeney kicked three points in the second half from distance, which is a rarity for Cork forwards. But, uh, you know, he's certainly one to watch. Great effort there by uh, Shane O'Donin. Uh, fell short, but there under it, Daniel O'Donin putting the goalkeeper, Pad Doyle, under pressure and uh, putting that over the bar off his left for the second point of the afternoon. I think Cullum um, Brian has already signed posted Dan O'Donin would be one of those talents that a lot of people are looking out. Left-footed player, actually something I didn't know actually up to this week, has been playing hurling with Ahabulluk and has actually played five of the last six weeks. So he'll certainly be up to, up to the speed of championship at this stage. But really quick, really good left foot, watch him. Kieran O'Donin getting the pass off there to his corner forward. Great, st great save by the goalkeeper getting down so well. Second bite of the cherry and it's in the back of the net. Damien O'Hurdle, the uh, corner forward who was denied first time by Pad Doyle. Knew exactly what to do second time of asking and from about five or six yards. But that was a, a, a bad turnover from a knock degree perspective. Absolutely. And look, that's the risk you take with these short kick outs. Here's another one now again. Putting uh, the defender on that occasion, Danny O'Connell, under huge pressure. He's forced to go back to, um, or should I say, that was uh, Michal Mahoney. And uh, it's over Garod Looney here. It's Looney there on the ball. 
Good fisted pass and a big run out by Matthew Dilworth. Experienced operator, former Cork under 21 player, one in All Ireland. One through the hands here. Dilworth again, going back as far as Gary O'Connor. All the way across to Michael Doyle, brother of the goalkeeper, Pat. Garod Looney. Still a, a lot of ground to be making up. It's Michael Doyle there crossing the 45 yard line, throwing off the tackle of Dara McLaughlin. But uh, forced to go back again, Dennis O'Connor. Out to uh, Owen McSweeney. McSweeney dispossessed though there, and it's all for North, and it's uh, Kiran O'Donin that's uh, leading the charge down the field. That's the 45 yard line that you see. Great Goal ball chance. inside there. Goal a chance. Corn, Goal chance. Ordle, and Ordle slams it into the back of the net. It, interesting enough there, I was watching the play develop. Um, Kilimartra are, are deploying Noel O'Leary as a sweeper when they don't have the ball. One of the midfielders are dropping in wing back. Now Ty Corkery is a very, very good player by all accounts. I, I've seen very little of him, but he, he's, he's supposedly holding his own in with Cork earlier on in the year. But um, Knock Degree brought everybody forward by one player. And as soon as the turnover happened, you had you know even numbers against even numbers, and ultimately a goal. That's going to be a huge uh, gut check again there for um, the men from Knocknagri. Let's see how they're going to come back from that. Keelan Buckley's their centre back out as far as Garod Looney. Going to come back in towards uh, look to be the midfielder there, uh, David O'Connor. Going through the hands again with um, Donna Moynihan, Fenton O'Connor. Going root one in towards his full great forward. Ball. Great ball great in and great shot. And a, oh. oh, right across the face of the goal from young John Fenton Daly. But it was a wonderful pass in to pick out Daly. Nola Golera back cleaning up there. Never so efficient out as far as uh, Danny O'Connell. To Mihalo Dasuna. Big field opening up there. It's uh, Danny O'Connell again with uh, Dasuna. No one in front of him. No knock the could do with a sweeper in that sort of a situation. First time ball well taken there in the corner. I had the man wearing number 15 who opts to go back to his uh, full forward, who in turn goes back as far as uh, Sean O'Farray from distance, and that's been waved uh, wide. But uh, good interplay by Shane O'Donin, Daniel <coughs> O'Donin, and uh, unfortunately the final shot from the midfielder drifting wide. Yeah, look, as Brian was saying, they're calling both sides are settling in. I mean, there's no point in saying otherwise. And not in the green now, have absolutely been rocked. They're like a punch of nose after being knocked down three times in the opening round. The one thing to say about them, though, these lads have actually been in Crow Park in the last couple of years. They've been in an All-Ireland final. They've been in a ding-dong All-Ireland final battle, and they've come out the top side of it. So they're 2-2 two -two to nothing down at the minute. I think, I think Brian mentioned it there already. They were very exposed defensively there. Like I mean, you had the, you had the wing back actually there. Daniel Michael uh, Michael O'Mahony, you know, I'm saying actually oh. was was well up the field actually when they were caught. Like so, I think that's something they that the sideline will obviously need to look at. But it's early days yet. Okay. Early days yet, but still, it's going to be a huge, huge comeback if uh, Knocknagree are going to pull this one out of the fire against uh, Kildamatra. Knocknagree, as we said, fighting for their championship survival in 2020. Michael Mahoney is the man. But uh, poor pass by him, tracked all the way by the uh, wing forward, Christor Omar. And they're going back there through uh, Dara McLaughlin. Very open game of football, it has to be said. Uh, Sean O'Farray had that uh, shot a few moments ago. Taigo Cochra, nice uh, ball back to uh, O'Farray. And turn has gone back to goalie. First time ball yet again pointed in there towards uh, Daniel O'Donin. Drifting out. Doesn't seem to have any options in the centre offering up. Uh, he's going to be content to go himself. Still, still Odenin, call for steps, still, still the full forward, trying to work an angle for himself onto the left, opts to go for the right in the end and puts that one over the bar. Column, it's absolute, um, I suppose, the vantage point we have here. You can see the space that's inside the 45 for, for Kilimartra every time they attack. I think. Um, Knocknagree are making a mistake. They're all changing men every time they attack. They're going forward, but then they're losing their own men. They'd be much better off if they just settle in. They're against a bit of a win. They're playing down. They're playing up a hill. Uh, they're trying short kick outs. They're pinning themselves in. If they just go back to basics a small bit and just man on man for a while, just get, get settled in the game, try and get a score to, they better have a better chance than what they're trying at the moment. 
That's the uh, wing back, Danny O'Connell, on your screen there at the moment. The pitch opening up in front of him. He's going to have a go himself. Try to put a bit of a curl in it, but uh, he's hit it completely and sent it out uh, wide. But uh, yet again, that was from a, a turnover. Uh, the uh, kick out, ending out going out over the sideline and quickly taken there by uh, Kieran O'Donin to get uh, Kilimatra up and running. Mark being called there by the uh, midfielder, Donna Moynihan. I'm told the only member of the squad that's married. <laughs> Put forward there is John Fenton Daly. Uh, interception again by the big uh, big hands of Garodo Goli. Cut in and across it. And uh, it all falls back down Graham O'Mokan. He's got uh, O'Ferre there in plenty of space. There's only uh, one man in front of him for about 30 yards. And managed to miss hit it, but uh, all fell perfectly as uh, Daniel O'Donin was perfectly positioned to uh, collect it back to uh, O'Ferre. O'Ferre on the 14 yard line, opts to go short to the corner forward and off the uh, left there. And that was uh, Shane O'Donin, the captain of the team. Column, it's like repeat, repeat, repeat here, to be honest about it. Knock Regree attack, they lose possession, maybe a bit intricate. And next thing, once once Kilnamart can break one tackle, they're out. And then it's easy, open season after that because their forwards, I think, are better than the full-back line that they're are, on at Are the they moment. putting themselves under undue pressure with this short kick out? Absolutely. I know the wind is strong, but like, I, I think they'd be better off if they just went back to a basic game and just, just went man-on-man man for now and tried to hold this space here in front of us here, this, this middle third space. Maybe if they put bodies in there rather than everyone committing forward. Michael Mahoney is the man that has been the recipient of a few of those uh, short kickouts, and he's uh, been uh, swallowed up there as he's trying to get something out of it. Uh, Matthew Dilworth. And to uh, John Fenton Daly with the uh, hefty bandage on his uh, left leg. Showing well, though. Um, and you can see Knock Negri just meeting a wall of white and uh, so slow and trying to create an opening there. The road Looney drops there in front of us with the wing back again. Mahoney, who's uh, forced to go back to uh, Owen McSweeney. Sweeney in towards uh, John Fenton Daly. Now, can he turn on something? Had that uh, glorious chance a few moments ago off his left hand side, and that's it. That's the uh, opening score, I believe, at this stage for uh, Knock Negree. Hard to believe. Yeah, and badly needed. Uh, you know, I mean, I think my mother used to say a phrase which was basically all duck or no dinner, and that's basically what Knock Negree have been doing the 15 minutes, Colin. I mean, they've basically, and you know what, in fairness, John Fenton Daly has always said that's the way they play football. But unfortunately, when you're moving up the grades, you're against better opposition. Yeah. And if you lose the ball, if you're turning over the ball in the top half of the field, you're going to get exposed. Wonderful piece of feeling there by uh, Donna Moynihan, and it's uh, offloaded to Fenton O'Connor, who's gone straight into uh, John Fenton Daly, the uh, whistle blowing there mark. for the mark. But he's uh, taken the uh, the shot, played on, and driven it over the uh, the bar. Now, to be fair to Knock Negri, the, the couple of balls that they have put up in the for, full forward line, John Fenton Daly has won them all. So it looks like to me is bo both full forward lines might be better than the respective full back lines. So when Knock Negri, to be fair, get the chance in the second half down here, if they can play and get their hands in the ball, they might do damage. So I, I wouldn't be saying the game is over by any matter of means. But, uh, interesting though, the, the, the first time ball quickly delivered into John Fenton as opposed to that kind of laborious mm, build-up yeah. that's uh, inviting uh, and almost giving time for their opponents to set up and prepare for the onslaught. Uh, Tygo Corkra is the man on the screen there on the 45-yard line. He's just crossing it there. Great ball in to the corner forward. Lovely offload, though, to uh, Gerardo Goli. Still Goli. Is he going to go for a goal? Trickles it into the back of the net under the goalkeeper. And that is a fantastic goal by the midfielder. Well, I think myself and Brian were going to say the same thing there, which is the angle of the run absolutely made that. And I mean, the in pass. fairness, yeah, yes, and the timing of the pass. But Golden's run there was absolutely not just the timing of it, but the angle of it, Cullum, took it out of it. No, I'm not saying I think maybe the keeper might be a small bit disappointed because I don't think actually Golden caught it flush. But suddenly it's 3 3 to two points. And as they extinguish that bit of a mini comeback that we saw there from uh, Knock Negri. Daniel O'Mahony is there full back, uh, gone to uh, Garod Looney, who's been forced farther and farther back to aid in the recovery mission. Uh, Donna Moynihan. Let's make use of it, is the call there now, but who's going to make use of it? It's John Fenton Daly that's taking it into his chest there, giving the full back Graham O'Mahony a bit of a, a run around. Uh, Matthew Dilworth. Impressive operator, as we've seen. Good ball to Michael Mahoney. Mahoney going as yes. far as Garode Looney, and Looney off the right. And is that going to be a third score of the... No, it's gone, gone wide. 
but uh, nice play there by uh, Nock Negri. Uh, yet again, we're seeing John Fenton Daly at the, at the core of a lot of it, but first time ball again seemed to do the needful. And the man dropping to go short and finding themselves into an awful lot of trouble. And oh no, Leinschig fouling the ball there. And that's going to be a, a free opportunity there for a knock degree. And I'd say it'll be placed on there. And it looks like it's uh, Fenton O'Connor is uh, the man standing over it. A uh, member of the, the famous uh, Rory family. I'm told by reliable sources when the uh, O'Connors are going well, knock degree are going well and well I'll tell you they'll badly need every O'Connor and O'Crohor and any derivative of it to be going well in the next uh, 50 Absolute, minutes or absolutely so absolutely Colm and I'm just looking again here there's three men inside here now for Kilimartra and there must be 50 metres of space up to the next line on the pitch like if you're playing against the wind and playing against the hill this space here is the one that you need to close off to give these defenders a chance but at the moment once Kilimartra as I say break a tackle they have all this open area to run into and that's what's killing them Anton O'Connell, primary school teacher, I'd say, probably hasn't uh, had to get the gloves dirty yet this afternoon. Nola Golera, out to uh, Danny O'Connell, good overlap play by the wing back. Dispossessed though by uh, tenacious tackling by Fenton O'Connor, but uh, plenty of reinforcements. The call coming here in front of us, and it's a uh, delivered nice little ball by uh, the Tiger nice Corker, going. who inside finds uh, Kieran O'Donin. That's O'Donin now on the ball. He's still got Corker next to him. O'Donin off his right, and that is a great, great score and great work as well by the wing back Tiger Corker. Nice interplay, and O'Corker actually continued the run as well and was looking for the yeah, return pass. He, he drew the man away. For the man, the man had to defend too, which he couldn't do, obviously. Pat Doyle has had a, a busy afternoon with only 15 minutes gone. Blameless though for, for any of the goals when they're flowing in like that. Uh, Danny O'Mahony going back to uh, to Doyle, who's going to go to his uh, his brother Michael. Owen oh, McSweeney, caught panelist of course. Time for him now to open up, but being uh, dragged back there, calling for the free referee says uh, play on. Testing ball there for Mahoney, who seems to be kind of the, the go-to man for for knock degree when coming out of defence. Done a mine hand <coughs> that far side there. Looking to go back. Dilworth uh, offering assistance there. It's uh, David O'Connor, his brother Fenton and Anthony, of course, on the uh, on the squad. Anthony, of course, out injured. It's uh, <laughs> all all that hard work coming to naught again, and here we come at pace. Uh, Mihala Dasuna. Looking to go to his uh, wing back, or his wing forward, should I say, uh, Christor Omar. It's Donna McLaughlin. And it just seems, at times, Kildamatra almost have a, an extra man the way that they're they're creating space. McLaughlin, the corner back, that's him there, yards from the 45 yard line. Got right across the field there. It's uh, Christor Omar. Opting to go to uh, Damien Ordel, scored that uh, opening goal. All the way back again, Danny O'Connell. Nice little off play there to Shane O'Donin. Great interplay yet again, still O'Donin rides the tackle. Running rings there, Damien Ordel into uh, O'Donin. That's Daniel O'Donin, the uh, full forward. As we've seen, can, can go off left or right. Danny O'Connell, out to the uh, corner forward, Shane O'Donin, the captain. Very, very patient, patient build up. But then again, I suppose when you've three goals in the ledger, mm -hmm. you can afford to be playing Barcelona, Tiki Taki. Well, the old style Barcelona anyway. I'm sure Lionel Messi might uh, <laughs> argue it's changed slightly. Oh, that was a good play there by uh, Sean O'Farray, who did so well to uh, win back the ball after it looked like he'd lost it. He's gone back to Kieran O'Donin, and O'Donin putting it over the bar. And I suppose that really is encapsulate the difference between the two Did you the count the passes, Cullum, there in that move? I, I stopped at about 20. <laughs> And I'll tell you though, I mean, that's very wearing. We're, at, we're just at the water break now. Like, that's very wearing on a side who, A, is up a hill against the breeze, is 11 points down, and is trying to track possession. And if you notice there, 
um, in all that passage of play, I didn't see one not in agree hand getting on a Kilnamartra player. I mean, you know, you can sit. There's a difference between actually shadowing a player and actually engaging a player. At the, you know, they looked that they were shell shocked. I think could we weren't they by what happened in the first 15 minutes, and I think they're sitting deep now and they're not actually engaging with the opposition. Absolutely, and I think Kilnamartra are tying with them a small bit. Um, you know, in the, in the first 10 minutes of the game, every time Kilnamartra had a turnover. They actually went went for the juggler. Now on that occasion, Kilimanjaro had everybody back, so they couldn't move the ball forward. But I think they're experienced enough to know that's the time then that you recycle the ball, play play with the opposition. They moved them left, they moved them right, they moved them left again. I don't know how many passes there, Tony, in the end, but certainly there was 15 or 20 passes and then a shot and, and a score. Now, I think that not going to agree. The only chance they have here is that if they they need to up the intensity themselves by about. 50% in terms of physicality. This is a, a, an open game of football. It's going to be won by Kilnamartra every day of the week here, as far as I can see. I think Knock are going to have to come out here. They're going to have to start hitting. They're going to have to start being physical. They're going to have to stop the ball being moved in as easily as it is inside the inside line. And I think, you know, looking at it at the moment, uh, Kilnamartra looked to have all, all the aces. Let me ask you a question, Kobe, as a, as a manager of some experience and repute. Yeah. If you're John Finton Daly now, do you stick or twist? Because you know, I mean, yeah, you're right. What they what they're doing now, what you're proposing, is what they should have done from the start. They now, unfortunately, find themselves three five to two. So, what do they do at this stage now? I I, I think the wind is, is quite strong, Tony, and I think if, if they can actually at the moment, if I'm John Finter Daly, I'm asking for it to not be as as, as uh, any way worse than what it is right now. Yeah. Get to half time. Get to half time. Even if you're nine points down, even something around that, yeah. you might do something because it looks as if the full forward line. For Gnocca can agree, can trouble the fullback to Kilimanjaro. And I think playing down here is absolutely um, you know, a huge advantage to you. The Gnocca uh, agree lads came out there. There was a, one of those Indian warrior chances as they uh, race from the blocks here. And it's uh, Michael Mahoney, the wing back, who's gotten on so much ball. Uh, great offload from him as far as uh, Matthew Dilworth, or no, it was uh, Dennis O'Connor. And uh, that one has uh, gone out. But uh, they, they, they really storm, <laughs> stormed out there anyway. Free in was, uh, was the end result there for a, a tackle on O'Connor. I think, Colm, in this 15 minutes, um, not going to agree, just, just have to try and just steady the game down, even slow it down, uh, you know, take their time. And if they can chip away with two or three points and get this lead down to something like eight or nine points, the second half would still be a very, very good game. Yeah, I think. I think the key, as you say, is for it not to get worse now. No, not not to get worse. Just 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 hold hold in as hard as you can here now. Fintan O'Connor, the man standing over the free there at that uh, free about uh, five minutes ago, and off the right, very casual, lovely kicking style by him, and uh, putting putting it over there. Yeah, there. I, I have seen I have seen Ackner agree before as well. I I've, I saw actually Duhalo last year against CIT. And Owen Sweeney kicked seven points from playing one half. So, like, that could happen for them in the second half. So, they, they, you know, once they keep this at, at in around this kind of score, they still have a chance. Big midfield pairing, though, has to be Most said for uh, Kilnamatra. And uh, that's going to be a big job for them in the second half as well. Daniel O'Donin, uh, oh, but, uh, well played there by uh, Keelan Buckley, who's the uh, captain of Nocknagri this afternoon. It's that man, Owen McSweeney, that Brian was mentioning a few moments ago. What a big game they'll be expecting from him in the second half is there to turn things around. Michael Doyle going across the field out to Danny Cooper. It's out with uh, David O'Connor. Sub being uh, warmed up there. Looks could be James Dennehy who uh, started the last day. Uh, made way for Matthew Dilworth, I think. So uh, we'll keep a track on uh, whether he's going to be introduced shortly. Keelan Buckley going back to uh, Donna Moynihan. Across the field there to the cornerback, Michael Doyle. And again, very slow build up again for uh, Knock Negree. But as the lad said, maybe it's a case of let's contain what we have anyway and we can uh, reassess in the second half. Owen McSweeney looked to be fouled, but uh, bounced back up and playing on. First time ball, nice ball there by uh, Dunhamoyne. And in as far as the Ooh. corner, and a heavy, heavy hand Ooh. across uh, Gary O'Connor's neck. And uh, referee, will he be taking uh, any action on that one there? Uh, the uh, the cornerback was kind of bending down for it, yeah. and uh, cut an arm around the neck. I think I think that is categorised Colum under a lazy hand by a defender, just kind of leaving it in there. And in fairness, he was probably ducking down. I don't think Kyle Egan has actually taken any action no. on it. 
But um, Listen, if he points this, Tony, if he points this, it'll be the first time I think that Knocker Green would have two scores in a row in the game, which is actually absolutely crucial for them. And if they get this one, you got it. Yeah. If they get this one and they manage to get three scores in a row, they're, they're actually starting to come back and, and start playing a small bit. Fenton O'Connor, the man uh, responsible for that uh, yet again. This time the uh, goalkeeper is uh, going short. Graham will walk on. And he's a uh, cornerback there, uh, Ona Leinchig. Uh, interesting to see now how Kilnamatra are once say getting a taste of their own medicine, but uh, they're not the agree are doing to others what was done to them in the uh, first half. So uh, great play there. Nice little personal battle developing here, I see in front of us between uh, Owen McSweeney and uh, Tyga Corkera. But uh, another chance here for Nochnagri to nip away at the uh, at that gulf off the right. It's gone right across the uh, face of the goal, up well, under it, and he did very well there, the midfielder uh, David O'Connor, and uh, chopped down, and that's going to be another free in. Here's the chance of that three in a row scores we were speaking about. It's very interesting actually watching Fintor O'Connor take those frees. He's kicking the ball off the outside of his right uh, from the sideline on the far side, Morris Fitzgerald esque. No, he's a very, 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 very good kicker. But, uh, you know, you, you'd like to think that you'd have somebody who could actually kick that ball maybe with their left leg. Um, despite the fact he scored the second last one, but it was a very difficult free. But look, this is three in a row now. It's down to eight points now, I think. So, yeah. like, this is the kind of territory where. The second half could be a huge contest if they can hold something like this. And I don't know the if we can pick it up on the, the camera here, Declan, alongside me, that we can see that the, the flags there on the far side, that there is a bit of a breeze uh, here in Morne Abbey, which could be a factor in the course of the second half. Well, up they go, and it's uh, Mihal Odasuna who takes it from uh, Gerard Ogoli, the man who scored a goal a little earlier, going out as far as Kirano Dunin. how uh, his side uh, needed a score, haven't scored since the uh, restart. And we've often seen so far teams struggling after the restart, but eventually it's kind of ferreted out there. And Damien Ordel, one of the goal scorers, uh, getting the point. But uh, again, that kind of momentum breaker that the water break now brings as well, too. Going a bit longer, Grace Peter Fielding there left to go up all in his own. David O'Connor and uh, back to what we said about Knock Negree getting uh, more luck out of going long mm. and going direct. Yeah. And the ball is with Garraud Looney there on the 45 yard line, opting to go inside to John Finton Daly. He's 21 yards out, but he's out on the sideline. Bit of work to do, being shattered there by Graham O'Mokon. Still John Finton going back as far as Dilworth. It's uh, Matthew Dilworth with a great run there coming at pace was Gary O'Connor. Finton Daly back to Dilworth. He's going to go right across the field and it's going to drop there to the midfielder. That's uh, David O'Connor. He's gone Finton back Daly into John Finton first. Daly. Great running by the uh, full yeah, forward. Brilliant. Back to uh, John Finton. Off his right, but a half block down on it and taken there like by the, uh, the cornerback. Yeah, and it's uh, Kieran O'Donin. They're sucking back here. Danny O'Connell. Danny O'Connell going to go to the Tygo Corker, the other wing back. Lovely little dink of a pass by O'Corker out to the big rangy midfielder, Sean O'Farray. Field opening up in front of him. First time ball punched in, falls away though from Daniel O'Wardle. Has a uh, help there from Daniel O'Donin. Going back to the other corner forward, Shane O'Donin and Shane O'Donin, the captain of the side from about 25 yards. And he's judged that to perfection. Yeah. Judged the wind as well, which is uh, blowing up here and uh, putting that over the bar. Those two points now for Kilimar to call him, you'd have to say if you were jumping to Daly, you'd be disappointed. Um, you know, I, I, I think four times uh, and after he hit the ball, both times, the first point they gave away, they actually had the ball back and they actually handed it back to Kinnamartra inside their own 21. That time, in fairness to John Fintadilly, he worked very, very hard to, get, to actually supply assist and actually end up kicking the ball, but got blocked down by Dan O'Donin, of all people, back in his own full back line. And, uh, we're seeing the Knock Negree corner forwards coming a long way out, uh, trying to find possession. That noise that you're hearing there in the background is uh, the commentary notes that'll just give you a an impression, an idea of the uh, wind that's here this afternoon. That's uh, Dilworth did very well to keep the ball back in play there. Not as far as uh, Michael Doyle, back to uh, Dilworth. He's the uh, nominated corner forward, been forced so far out. Michael Mahoney, a big ball player, I must say. He's uh, done quite a lot in the course of the game, and he's after winning another free there for a bit of a tussle there with the uh, wing forward, Kieran O'Donin. Yeah, uh, you'd have to say since the water break, you talk about momentum killer, Column, 
since the water break, Nocturne Gris certainly have come out and, and, and given uh, a bit more intensity and a bit more physicality, but there's still loads more that they'll have to give if they want to win the game. Fenton O'Connor opts to go uh, short on this occasion in as far as uh, Dennis O'Connor. Dennis off his left. Oh, hits off the post, looked to be on its way. But uh, interesting there that uh, Fenton, whether it was the, the wind or the range or whatever, or saw the run there of uh, O'Connor. And uh, O'Connor just desperately unlucky there. Uh, literally a matter of inches there for him on that occasion. Anthony O'Connor. One of about, uh, I'd say, four or five teachers on this uh, Kill the Matter team. Fine long ball out by him. Up they go on a great piece of fielding there by David O'Connor. They're getting some reward there at midfield. Dilworth has uh, drifted much farther out and is uh, winning a lot of those uh, balls around there. Back to uh, Dennis O'Connor. To Dilworth as a runner there, and that's the uh, centre back, uh, Keelan Buckley. First time ball by him into the uh, wing forward, uh, Fenton O'Connor. And force back as far as uh, Keelan Buckley as well. Now with uh, Donna Moynihan. See the sun starting to break through here in Moran Abbey uh, this afternoon. Just time to mention it's a hectic weekend of championship action here on the uh, Irish Examiner live stream service. And I'll give you uh, more details of that in a few moments' time as we go back with uh, Dilworth in as far as uh, Fintan O'Connor. Dilworth again. It's almost uh, the sides are afraid to have a have a pop. Great ball though by Dilworth in as far as Dennis O'Connor. Great running by uh, his opposite corner forward. Back to uh, Dilworth. Still a long way, but he's got a runner inside him, and that's uh, perfectly weighted for Dunham Moynihan. Doesn't build up the head of speed. Breaks. Fenton O'Connor is there to collect. And O'Connor's been pulled back, and that's going to be a free dead straight in front of the goals. So for all that uh, hard work, anyway, eventually. Uh, Nock Nagari getting some reward in the uh, in the form of a free for their uh, marksman Fintan O'Connor. Colin, we're going to be keeping an eye obviously on all the other Premier Intermediate uh, games this afternoon. Of course, the other game in this group as we just wait for Fintan O'Connor to steady himself for this free. The other game in this group is between Neva Bon and St Vincent's, and there's been a dramatic turnaround in that already. We we'll just wait for a moment. Good score there by Fintan O'Connor. But Vincent's, who would have been pretty much written out completely, because Neva Bon are the ones, remember, contesting the second or the, the qualifying place. Mm -hmm. Early after 10 minutes, it was St. Vincent's two goals and a point, Neva Bon, no score. Then I've just actually just got a text there to say after 26 minutes, it's Neva Bon 2 5, St. Vincent's 2 4. So a dramatic comeback there by Ballyvourney. We'll be keeping a, an ear and uh, an eye on that, and indeed some of the other uh, score lines at uh, the half time break. Thanks for that, uh, Tony. It's uh, Mihala Dasuna who's uh, on the ball. Big ball, and all the time in the world underneath it is uh, Tygo Cochra. Has uh, done well down this uh, wing here, trying to be uh, held up there by uh, Owen McSweeney. They've been uh, tussling away on and off the ball in the course of the first uh, 25 minutes here this afternoon. Bit of back chap, but uh, referee stamping his authority, and it's uh, right on the 45-yard uh, line, and it looks like it's going to be Odesuna who'll take this. We were saying, Colm, at the start of the game, like if Kilnamartra win, obviously the, the target for them is a direct route through to the semi-final and certainly the other team who would be best placed to go straight through our new market and they're certainly mean business today they're 2-8 to 4 points ahead over Castle Town Bear 5 minutes short of half time so I think you can take it that new market are well on their way to a semi-final place Great strike and a great pair of hands by Patrick Doyle tracking it all the way, there was some spin on that ball we were watching it in flight here really uh, got under it but uh, goalkeeper to his credit watched it and uh, caught it under the crossbar. Of course, uh, that goalkeeper, uh, known for his uh, goal-keeping, but also his goal-scoring, which I believe scored a goal in an All-Ireland Junior Final a few years ago against uh, Multifarren. So I'm sure he uh, still likes to remind people of that one. Uh, Keelan Buckley is on the ball, heavy shoulder by him, uh, blowing uh, Shane O'Donin back, but uh, spilling the ball in the process, and Mihalo Dasuna taking it and uh, rides the first tackle. As an option uh, inside him, great running off the ball here, and it's uh, finding its way to Kieran O'Donin. It was uh, Danny O'Connell that set him up. There's uh, O'Donin, often go across towards uh, Daniel O'Donin. 
and uh, trying to work it on to the left. No, opts to see will he try it off the right. And there he does it. No problem whatsoever. I'm telling you, a bit touch of class there. Yeah, he's very, very classy. Um, you know, to be fair to him, you know, once he has the ball, uh, the fullback seems to be covering on his left left leg only. And twice now, Colm, he's come back onto his right and he, he scored two lovely points there. Score now 3 9 to 7 points with uh, 30 minutes gone here. So we'll be uh, heading to half time. Just like that, perfect timing. We're in sync here, uh, Cahal Egan and myself. So, lads, plenty to talk about there. What a start. And is it fair to say what a comeback? If you just, I know this might sound crazy now, but if you just take the goals out of it for a second, two of those goals happened within the space of three or four minutes. Um, you know, if you take the goals out of it in the last 50 minutes, you'd have to say the Knack Regree are given as much as, they, as, as they've received. Now, obviously, look, you're 11 points down. You're going to have to get a couple of goals. But I, I don't see the Kilimanjaro defence being so tight that, that Knack Regree won't have opportunities. But I, I do think there's a possibility that Kilimanjaro might might score at the other end which makes things very very difficult for you but look um, there is I always say here in Morn Abbey there's you know that fall of ground is a huge advantage the wind is coming and going but um, I think you know if not have any hope here they're going to have to come out early with all guns blazing and, and, and go for the juggler and get a goal or two early I think in Kilnamartra Cullum would have known I mean one thing and, and you know people will some people you know cynics will say it's naive by John Finton others will say like it's great to see like that's not an agree play open football you know that's the way they play so I think Kilnamartra would have known coming into this game that not an agree are going to be a little bit open and I think in down and not an agree during the week they would have been banking on a fast start now the fact that they were against the breeze, you know, up a hill against a side like Kilnamartra. Maybe, Brian, you know, John Finton might have said, OK, maybe we'll be a little bit more conservative because, unfortunately, 15 minutes in, you're in that scenario if you're on the not degree sideline where you're actually saying to the referee, is there any chance we could actually start again there and get a second go at this? Because now they're in a, they're in a situation where, you know, what are they, 9, 10, what are they, 11 points down? 3, 9 to 7, yeah, at this stage. And... That first 15 minutes was was kind of suicidal, kamikaze kind of defending, like realistically, especially when, as I said, you had all the elements. Maybe, look, it's great, and we're, you know, Harry Hindsight is a great selector, as they say, like, but, you know, maybe if they bedded themselves into the mm. game for the first 10 minutes and then opened it up, then maybe, ch you know, challenge Kilnamartra's pulse a small bit. But what they did is, unfortunately, they gave Kilnamartra a massive leg up in the first 10 minutes. And any self-doubts, anything like that that Kilnamartra would have had was gone out the window. They have shown in the last 15 minutes that they can play ball, they can cause problems. And as Kobe said, if the elements stay up, and right, right as we're standing now, the wind has completely died down. But if it does pick up again, they do have the forwards to cause problems. But I think I heard Brian saying it there, you know, you're going to have to see a goal in the first five, ten minutes of the second half. Uh, and then one other thing as well, Colm, is, uh, sorry there, Tony. One other thing, one other thing as well is that, you know, I, I would uh, appreciate the the approach from John Finton daily that, you know, it's all out attack. You know, you have the ball and trust yourself that you can score. And possibly, you know, in, in games previous, that's that's the way it has operated. But um, one, one of the things I would say is that in this pitch especially, when you have inside forwards who are very, very dangerous and you allow them all that space and you allow... Th the guy with the ball on the outside all the time in the world. The poor fullback has no chance. The cornerback has no chance. You know, it, it, you're relying on your teammates to put pressure on the ball outside. If that's not coming, uh, and you're on very, very, very good players, there's huge difficulty for you inside on your own. Okay, well, we've seen John Fenton Daly any time he gets the ball looks dangerous, needs a bit of support yeah. around him. And as you said, Owen McSween is a fella. He's in some ding dong battle there at the moment with Tiger yeah, Mark as well too. Yeah, and to be fair, you know, Kilimart have decided that, that Omar Sunni is a, a, a very, very good player, which he is. You know, he made his debut last year with Cork in the Championship. He's been, suffered a few injuries, but as I said, I saw him playing against Donegal uh, two years ago now, I'd say, and he was very, very impressive with long range kicking and long range scores. I saw him playing with Duhallow against CIT last year. He got seven points and a half. Now, to be fair, Ty Corkery is actually, uh, anywhere he goes, Ty Corkery is up on top of him, not giving him an inch. Um, and he, he's really, really kind of, I said, getting inside his head a small bit. But, uh, you know, as we speak now, the wind is picking up again. If not going to be going to do anything, 
Owen Sweeney's going to have to kick five or six points here in the second half as well. Want to just very quickly before we go to Tony there, just for a rundown and some of the score updates. Just want to mention two people watching us uh, today. Chris Mars' dad, who's uh, recovering from illness uh, at the moment, we want to say hello to him. And as well, we want to say best wishes to Donal O'Leary, uh, Noel's father, who's uh, also recovering from illness, and they're watching us uh, this afternoon. Again, the restrictions still in place. It's a, a very empty, lonesome Moran Abbey here this afternoon. We'll wait with bated breath for the next couple of days for the government announcement in terms of what the road map for the next uh, few months is going to look like in terms of matches such as this and attendances but just wanted to say anyway uh, hello and uh, best wishes to uh, Don Lolira and to uh, Chris Maher's father as well. Tony. I'm looking down there, call him into the corner and John Finton Daly is absolutely getting stuck into his players but of course this is only one of six Premier Intermediate Championship games going on today and just to keep an eye um, this is the Group B encounter of course, Group C, do you remember we mentioned at the start, I thought I said Nemo had done really well and I was you know, if I, I'm sure there was a lot of Nemo people saying there's Lean patronising Nemo again they'll meet their match today against Wilt McCroom, well Nemo are leading 3-4 to 2-6 at half time. I tell you, if Nemo went and won all three games, Kobe, and th like that is a r massive achievement. McCroom at the moment, Cullum, were in second place. Canturk, though, were in third, both on two points, and Canturk are 3-7 to not 5 ahead over Gabriel Rangers. So they're going to win, you would think, at this stage. So the pressure is really on McCroom. McCroom could find themselves out of the championship this evening unless they can turn it around in the second half. Just briefly, Newmarket, as I mentioned, uh, have a big lead over Castletown Bear. Castletown Bear were hoping, so Newmarket beating Castletown Bear is probably doing Ahada a favour. At the moment, you'd think it's Newmarket and Ahada to come out of that group. You can take your pick out of this one because we don't know what's happening, but Neva Bon have turned that round. They're 2 6 to 2 4 ahead against St Vincent's, having been 2 1 to no score. So they must have had a disastrous first 10 minutes. So this group is very much open for play and the Group C between Nemo, McCroom and Cantork very much open as we look forward to the second halves. Some going by a club like, like Nemo when you consider their second team to be putting in score lines and performances like that. Yeah, I, I think I was actually asking myself today, Colm, does the format in the championship suit the likes of Nemo where you have a condensed period of games where you have a lot of players and, and that's what Nemo have they have a lot of players so if they only use 16 or 17 players in their senior games they haven't really they been yeah, it, yeah they haven't been tested uh, so far in the senior championship really uh, you know they've played Valleys and they've played Bishopstone um, you know, they're playing Douglas tomorrow obviously in the live game with us but I think um, you know when you're training 30 or 40 people together everyone's chomping at the bit to get into the first team you're county champions and there's a second competition that's happening you know, mm -hmm. in conjunction with the first one, in around the same weekends, um, and no big gap between them, it actually allows you to build huge momentum in the club if you're going well. And that's exactly what's happening. To be fair to Nemo, um, I'm not sure do they have too many guys on their intermediate team who are going to come into their senior team and grab places, but they have a lot of players who will play at a certain standard and play the Nemo way and actually cause teams in, in this competition huge difficulty. And if they come out of it with three wins, which they possibly might do now, it's a fair testament of what's going on over there at the moment. OK, just uh, looking around, as Tony pointed out, uh, plenty of uh, chatter from the uh, Knock Nagree uh, players and mentors down here on our right. And across the field, much quieter, much more settled, as you would expect from uh, Kilnamatra referee uh, Cahal Egan blowing his whistle there, calling the uh, teams back out. Knock Nagree racing back into uh, position. Brian just made mention there of our live games. It's uh, the first of a triple header here in Moran Abbey. We're in duty tomorrow uh, and it's uh, football all the way. Premier senior action, of course, uh, Nemo and Douglas uh, City Derby and uh, Nemo hunting for three wins from three and a uh, place directly into the semi-finals. <coughs> and then we've got uh, St. Michael's and O'Donovan Ross. Down, that's down in, in a skein at uh, four o'clock. O'Sheen Langan and uh, Larry Tompkins on duty for that one. We've spent a lot of the half-time uh, column speaking about not in agree. And, you know, when you think the opposition is the one who's 11 points ahead, and, you know, for anybody who doesn't know the, sta the story of Kilnamartra, I mean, it is a fairy tale story where they've come to from this. I was talking to their manager, Kevin O'Sullivan, during the week, and he said it's not so long ago that they'd go on the piss if they won the first round of a Muscari Junior Championship game. You know, and look at them now. So they are a fantastic story. You know, and while we've been looking at not agree in their defending, you've also got to applaud Kilnamartra. Half an hour remaining. 
and a half an hour for Knock Negree to uh, make their uh, survival in this uh, championship. Dilworth, a big high dropping ball. The lads talking about the need for goals. No Leo O'Leary oh, under it. Isn't that a wonderful, call the mark. No, wonderful a piece of fielding there by uh, Noli. Hard to believe the uh, anniversary of their All-Ireland win is only a week or two away, 10 years ago. Cork victorious over down. But uh, I must say, if I was a goalkeeper, I'd love to see Noli O'Leary <laughs> go, going up in front of me for a, a dropping ball like that. And you'd be a, you'd be a brave man to uh, to come in for the tackle there. Uh, just on Tony's point there, Colin, regarding Kilnamartra, there's a great lesson for all clubs uh, in, in the fact of going through the divisions in the county league. Now, we often talk about the Kerry County League and, and you know, clubs really trying to get to Division 1. Kilimartra have done something similar here as the county league has changed. They've, they've come up and they're, they're competing now very, very, very competitively at Division 1 standard. And you can see it in them, the way they're playing now. Daniel O'Donin's first time ball in as far as uh, Shane O'Donin. Shane uh, holding off uh, Gary O'Connor. Great little interplay back. And uh, is it going to be another goal chance? And the ball is in the back of the net. We talked about a, a goal at the start of the second half. Uh, we weren't expecting it, though, to be coming the Kilimanjaro away. And it looks to be Kieran O'Donin, the wing forward, who's after slotting that in. And that surely is too much of a mountain for even Knocknagree to climb. Booming uh, kick out all the way down as far as John Fenton Daly. Just came out of nothing, didn't it? Out uh, with uh, Damien Ordle. Calling it as uh, as a mark, is it? To be fair now, you know, the interpretation of the rule there is he went to play on and then he decided he put up his hand because he saw where he was. Uh, the referee sh should be saying here now that that mark was not, shouldn't be allowed. Anyway, the end result is the mark is allowed uh, 21 yards out. A bit of a breeze behind him, uh, Wardle off his uh, right, and he's uh, driven that one. He has put it over the bar, and that was uh, some score by the corner forward, goal scorer in the uh, first goal. half. But let's go back to that goal there, lads. Uh, it just just kind of came out of came out of nothing. Yeah, again, it goes back to the overexposure and the knock knock re defence. Uh, you know, to be fair, I, I would say that the cornerback had the corner forward and. Uh, Defended him quite well, but next thing, uh, one pass off and we're in trouble, you know. James Dennehy was the man that we mentioned there in the first half. He is on, he is wearing number 20. That was John Fenton Daly there with a, a wide, a poor wide from their uh, talisman and full forward. So uh, just to say that it's uh, James Dennehy is there on your screen wearing number 20. Uh, we'll check in a few moments who's uh, made way. But uh, he is uh, being taken up by uh, Nolig Olera. Currently working uh, as a, a rep with Southern Milling. Eye ball there, and it's uh, Keelan Buckley, but he can only find uh, Olera. And it's out with uh, Mihalo Dasuna to uh, Christor Omar. Across the field there to uh, Daniel O'Donin. That was a uh, distinctive boots, boots by O'Donin. First time ball there, putting the uh, mm. defender there, Michael Doyle, under pressure. He did well, though, to kind of punch it away, and uh, it's uh, taken up. Uh, by a, a relieved not degree defence, given uh, what uh, had happened a few moments ago. That's uh, Dinnehy racing onto it, opts to let it go in as far as John Fenton Daly. He's, uh, Dinnehy's still on his left if he wants to go that way, or is he going to keep going himself? Still, John Fenton Daly works it onto his right. Has he got the angle right? No, he hasn't. And that's uh, two bad wides back to back by yeah. the uh, full forward. Yeah, I think he's probably more comfortable on his leg, left leg column looking at them. But, uh, you know, again, you can see there, uh, to be fair, one long ball cuts out so many people that the space, I don't know the way this pitch plays, the space invariably is, is in around the 45 here. Now, look, it's, it's, it's next to impossible now for an to to come back and win this game. But they're going to have to give this something. They're really going to have to give it something. Uh, dink of a pass out to the uh, midfielder, to Sean O'Farray, who uh, goes back to his, uh, his corner back down there, Ono Leinchik. But uh, Olajnczyk is fouled, back to Nullig. Great uh, presence there. I think, I think Cullum as well, you'll note that the even the not degree sideline who are underneath us here are getting a little bit agitated with their own players in that the fact that they're not engaging the player. They're, they're, getting, they're getting into their ears now and they're telling them to engage and to press and they're not doing that. Danny O'Connell set the move in motion. Currently it's Daniel O'Donin and the ball being uh, held up by uh, two men. Look to be a free referee, says uh, play on. 
Yeah. Oh, great interception there by uh, Sean O'Farray as David O'Connor was waiting it to fall into his hand. Another chance uh, there to O'Donin and O'Donin off his left. That's Shane O'Donin as opposed to Daniel O'Donin. Slots it over there, but a bit of ball watching there by the midfielder, yeah, waiting yeah. for the ball to drop into him. And Sean O'Farray came out of nowhere, powered past David O'Connor and set up what led to that score. Yeah, Colm, a lot of basic errors, you know, th those points that they gave away in the first half, that point there, the goal that they gave away here in the second half, you know, there are small basic things that shouldn't be happening at the level, but you know, I think, you know, to be fair, Nocturne are a bit rattled, they have two or three players, especially the John Finton Daly here, who continues to show for the ball and continues to do the right things, but they need, they need, they need almost a miracle now. Dennis O'Connor is uh, taking the shot there from distance, dropping around the square, goalkeeper safely opting to punch it out there, Anton O'Connell, and... Uh, there's uh, plenty of assistance there helping out. One of those is Chris Oromar, offering to go back as far as Nolig Olera. Oh, nice little time there on the ball by Olera out to uh, the, the man that's uh, running on. Four, nine to seven points, by the way, is the, uh, the score is probably up on the screen here at the moment anyway, but uh, just in case, four, nine to uh, seven points. Uh, that isn't uh, a misprint or anything like that. We're about uh, 40 minutes elapsed back with the uh, the play and uh, racing onto it. That is the uh, full back there for Kilimatra. Graham O'Mokan takes a heavy blow to the rib cage there as he was going onto it. Are we going to see our first card of the afternoon from the uh, referee, Cahaligan? Full back, uh, as I said, uh, racing out a long way. Looks to be the midfielder, David O'Connor, who's uh, the man that's been spoken to. And uh, oh, Mohan was just building up a, a head of steam, taking the pop pass and uh, took a, a blow there into the ribcage. And uh, the referee, I'm sure, is uh, going to uh, issue the first card of the afternoon. Yes, it is a yellow card. Caught the boy to uh, David O'Connor. In Group C, Cullum, um, McCroom and Nemo are now level. And uh, Canturk are beating Gabriel Rangers 3-11 to 7 points. So I think you can take it that Canturk are going to get to 4 points. And I think all eyes now are going to be on McCroom to see whether they can actually beat Nemo and make it down to, sp down to scoring difference. And we'll keep an eye as well too on the latest from that uh, Neva Bourne game in a few moments time as well to see can St Vincent's uh, losing their two games to date can they turn something around in this uh, final day and uh, upset things completely of course uh, if they were to beat Neva Bond, it would be the situation where uh, yeah, the latest I have is uh, Neva Bond 2-9 2-7 to St Vincent's Neva Bond up by uh, two points with uh, into the second half there oh, ball just bounced over John Finton Daly did all the hard work there and just the bounce uh, catching him and uh, out comes uh, Danny O'Connell there out as far as uh, Mihalo de Suna. That's the halfway line there. He's a uh, man calling for the uh, Garodo goalie, but he opts to go short to um, Danny O'Connell, who's uh, wrapped up by uh, two players. Another sub on there for uh, for Nocknagri. Paul O'Connor is on. Centre forward there is uh, Owen McSweeney into John Fenton Daly. John Fenton has the runner coming at speed. Me, me, Michael Mahoney uh, opts to go back to uh, McSweeney and McSweeney's shot gone wide. And is that, is that about three wides? In the yeah, there? The three poor wides. You know, I think you know it, it looks quite easy to score into that goal from what we saw in the first half. And you know, those three points are absolutely vital to knock agree. But um, you know, I can see a small bit of pep coming out of them now. Um, they're not. They're not really, 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 really challenging the game, to be fair. Powerful kick out uh, again, giving that bit of a breeze. They're all up for it. And Nolly Golera, perfectly positioned there, knew exactly what his role was. And he's uh, after giving the ball back to the man who gave it to him, Garodo Goli, in as far as uh, Mihola Dasuna, who's. Uh, been here, there and everywhere in the course of this game. Uh, Sean O'Farré, the midfielder, opts to dink it into the full forward to Daniel O'Donin and O'Donin off his right and that's a fine score again. The yeah. simple things done simply and done yeah. simply well. Uh, that was perfection, Colm, uh, from Noel O'Leary's positioning on the, on the kick out. Uh, bro ball broken down from three kick passes later and it's over the bar with Daniel O'Donin. Um, so I, I do really feel, you know, right now you, the game looks a bit dead. I go Corker running onto it there, long kick out by the goalkeeper and it was a, a mark that was awarded to uh, to uh, Kilnamatra and uh, I was uh, lost for words there as Mihala Dasuna who's done everything right so far has uh, planted that into the training field here behind us. Uh, beautiful setup, as I said here in uh, Moran Abbey this afternoon. We have to mention as well to Moran Abbey, Tony, because next weekend, a bit of history being made by the Irish Examiner, live streaming <laughs> ladies football and the aforementioned Moran Abbey 
will be uh, chasing yet another title and uh, West Cork standing in the way. Yeah, and, and in actual fact, I was at this very pitch column when they met in the championship in the group phase um, back in July. Best game of football probably I've seen this summer. It was an absolute cracker. They are by a mile the best two sides in Cork. And I'll tell you, anybody who wants to watch a really good game of football next Saturday, watch that game between West Cork and the reigning, and remember going for seven in a row, reigning All-Ireland champions, Moore and Abbey. And we'll be delighted to be bringing you that on our live stream service here on the Irish Examiner, part of a hectic weekend yet again of uh, matches and uh, details on the games we'll be covering will be coming later in uh, the week. Uh, another little pullback here in front of us, no car being issued, and it's uh, Mihala Dasuna, who uh, for me has caught the eye today, Shane O'Donin. Wonderful to see such hand passing and interplay when it uh, comes off. A well drilled team, O'Donin, opting to go to his uh, midfielder, Sean O'Farré. Had uh, Max Sweeney alongside him, but a uh, lovely little kick pass then when it's uh, forced into Daniel O'Donin. Who, uh, goes uh, back again to uh, looks to be one of the corner forwards Ooh, there. Some great, great interplay goal. out as far as the uh, wing back there to Danny O'Connell and O'Connell oh. off the crossbar. Off Surely the it was going to be a goal. Surely Colin, we were going to be for a goal, goal here. Uh, Would have been a great goal. Gary O'Connor pumping it down first time. It's with Matthew Dilworth. That's huge laid off there. The uh, wing back smacking it off the uh, crossbar. Goalkeeper beaten. John Finton Daly on the 14-yard uh, line is going to trail across the post, try to be kept in play there, but it was a, a yard, I'd say, gone over the uh, end line when the uh, fist got onto it, but but that uh, was, uh, again, intricate passes, and unfortunately for the uh, wing-back, Danny O'Connell, his uh, shot was probably millimetres too high and smacked off the crossbar and back out into play, and a huge relief there for uh, Nock Negree. Now, as I said, we'll be listening to see Can St Vincent's upset everything against uh, Neva Bonn and uh, uh, give them a lifeline in this uh, 2020 championship. For the viewers, Colm, just exactly, um, you know, if, if Bellavoni or Neva Bonn were to win that game against Vincent's, they'd obviously be standing on three points. Knock Negree currently on three points in the head-to-head -head game. Knock Negree uh, and Vincent's, or sorry, Knock Negree and Neva Bonn um, ended up as a draw, obviously. So where do we go? Well, the one thing the one thing that Kilnam Archer will continue to do here, Brian, is they'll continue to knock up a score, score yeah. because that is important. Yeah. Now, that is, I presume their players are aware in terms of the ranking. I'm looking here. Yeah. Newmarket are now two ten to one four okay. ahead of Castletown Bear. So anybody who does their maths, that's another ten points Sean on, to plus on the, the twenty one yard line and driving that one wide. But again, it just it was like the Red Sea parting there. Sorry, Tony, back to, to no, yours. No, I was there. just saying so I mean it, it, even as things stand, that would put Newmarket at plus 26. Okay. At the moment, though, Kilnamartra with their thing, they started at plus 19, so Kilnamartra would still be in the box seat as the number one ranked team, and I think they'd want to stay there. Yeah. Absolutely, and there doesn't seem to be a let-up with them, to be fair. If anything, they've controlled the game even more in, the, in, the, in this um, quarter than, than the, the previous one, certainly. Tiger um, Conker shot there uh, going wide. Yeah, we, while you were just chatting there, another goalkeeping kick out uh, intercepted yeah. and uh, started again then afresh by uh, Kieran O'Donin. Fine uh, fetch and a, a fine uh, mark by him. Kieran O'Donin has had a fine 40 minutes so far, Colm. He's, he's extremely quick. He's very good on the ball. He obviously can feel the ball too because he's caught more than that kick out. Um, and I've been very, very impressed with him. But certainly, Kilimartis forwards, uh, once they have the ball, they play a lovely brand of football and they're very, 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 very good. Calls there for uh, Mikey Doyle to offload it there, but he's been held up there by uh, Mihala Dasuna, who for me has been one of the star men this afternoon in that kind of triangle in front of us here. He's uh, helping out his defence, helping out his attack, and uh, just doing all the simple things right is what uh, what you want. Tiger Carker going back as far as Ono Leinchig into the uh, wing forward, Kieran O'Donin, who's been impressing uh, Brian, going back to Oleinchig. One of the teachers on the team, along with Anthony O'Connell and Donna McLaughlin. It's uh, Sean O'Farré. First time ball, ball plenty of space ball. for Odessuna inside great there. Is ball. he going to go for the goal? Yeah. That was a super, super, super ball, ball wasn't Sean O'Farré. Uh, absolutely brilliant ball. The fullback, somebody said to me one time, when you know, in terms of fullback play, in relation to the ball, in terms of defending, 
you know, if you're the last man back, which the full back was, you have to take up the defensive position, which means you, you have to stand at least behind behind your, your, your attacker. Everyone else, in terms of defence, can stand in relation to the ball and can stand one kick away from the ball, but you can be up in front. But certainly the full-back's position wasn't that bad. But if he was, if he was playing by the mantra I'm talking about, he would have been in behind Dan But the ball was so good, it cut him out completely. It, it was a phenomenal, yeah. it wasn't a 30-yard yeah, kick. So by good ball. It. And a great finish too. Great yeah, finish. Just very calmly waited almost for the goalkeeper to commit himself before uh, kicking it in to uh, what was uh, an empty net. And that uh, the goal score from uh, Daniel O'Donin, the man we were talking about in advance of uh, today's game. It's uh, Fionbaro Ala. And uh, that one across yeah, the field there, dangerous ball. Uh, that should have been Paul O'Connor. Uh, apologies there, getting uh, confused there in the names. Yeah, Paul O'Connor with the uh, the shot across. But um, defensively, Cullum, in, in fairness to Kilnamartra, their keeper, and we're just there taking a little break so we can chat. Their keeper actually hasn't had a shot to make, ha hasn't had a shot to save yet. In fairness to him, so you know, Kilnamartra, I was down watching them on Tuesday night training. I was having a chat with Kevin O'Sullivan, and I stayed on afterwards. They played two 15-minute halves. And it was, Kobe, a carbon copy. They're a kicking team. They're moving, their fluidity. They concentrate so much on kicking. And you see that pass there that Brian and yourself were just talking about. That, that is the example of what that. That is basically putting something over your own shoulder and into, into a guy's pocket inside. And I know we can criticise the defending there, but in fairness, that was an absolutely super, super ball. Just one thing, just to show how multi-coded we are here in the Irish Examiner. I know I've one Bishopstown man beside me. There's another Bishopstown man at a very important day today out in La Rochelle. Ronan O'Gara's first game, the new season, head coach, La Rochelle. They were allowed to get 8,000 in into a 16,000 capacity. I must admit, I was talking to him last night and I was saying, how did that happen? He was saying he was more worried about the fact of what Toulon would bring. When well, La Rochelle have beaten them 29-15, so it's a great start for Raj to the new season in the top 14. What do you think of that, Mr. Bishop's Town colleague? <laughs> Absolutely delighted for him, and I think uh, you know if anyone was to follow his lead and, and be as brave as he has and been as smart as he has as well, to be fair, uh, to go to New Zealand, come back to France. You know, uh, he's a young family. He's backed himself all his career, and uh, I, I have known him since he's been very, very young. And certainly, uh, I'd have massive admiration for him, and I'm delighted that um, you know that La Rochelle are, are are winning games because I think he's he puts himself under a lot of pressure, and he probably always has. But um, I think uh, you know I'd love to see them uh, do very very well because he's one of our own, of course. Incredible storyline indeed, and uh, thanks for. I must say, a first for me anyway, French top 14 rugby results as part of a, an Irish examiner, Cork <coughs> County Championship GA live stream. Uh, bringing it back local, have to mention the club lottos. Wait for this, lads. Bit of trivia for you. Kilnamatra's club lot at the moment stands at €20,000. And if you're in Knocknagree, their club lotto is at a record 17,200. And back to the Kilimanjaro one, because it's 20,000, they've actually had to start a second lotto, yeah. which is now at 7,000. So, you know, for a local, small, rural club, that is some pot yeah. of cash. But equally, it is some amount of money that people are putting into it. Yeah, and I think, look, and we've seen it particularly in the last six to eight months, with the onset of COVID, is the, the place of the GA in Irish society, in Irish community. Um, you know, the GA stepped up absolutely to a man and to a woman and to a child over the last six, seven months. And I think the place in, in, in towns and villages all over Ireland and the role of, of clubs, uh, I'm not surprised when, when, when I drive past clubs and I see signs for lottos of 20,000, 17,000, 18,000. And I think that's that's a testament to the, to the work that GA clubs do all over the country. Goal chance for Nocton Gree, but a wonderful save. You were, Tony was mentioning a few moments ago that the uh, goalkeeper, Anthony O'Connell, has had nothing to do. Well, he's after coming to the rescue there as uh, Fintan O'Connor came through. Goalkeeper, to his credit, got his angles perfectly. <laughs> was after taking a, a hefty shot right into the ribcage. But um, that was a, a powerful start. And uh, I must say, credit to the goalkeeper, O'Connell, came out and did very well in his uh, receiving treatment now. Just a quick update, Colm. 
St. Vincent's are doing everything they can for not agree here to help them qualify in fairness because St. Vincent's are now level again midway through the second half with Nave Bond. 210 Nave Bond, 210 St. Vincent's. If I could just update you with one other very important detail. McCroom have now gone five points ahead of Nemo. 3.10 to 3.5 in Group C and Canturk are 4.12 to 12 ahead of Gabriel Rangers. So as that's looking at the moment, everyone is going to finish on four points there and we're going to come down to scoring difference. Patrick Doyle, the goalkeeper, comes up to the uh, 45 and ping that over. He had another five or six yards on that as well at the moment. Looks like, I could be wrong, but it looks like Doyle is almost going to be playing way out the field he hasn't gone back into goal since we came back out it's, it's almost like he's going to play as a, an extra man uh, out there be just interesting to see how we'll pick that up in the camera in a few moments Stephen Cluxton role uh, Stephen Clu exactly but uh, usually Stephen Cluxton keeps to within about 20 yards of goal look where he is at the moment very interesting anyway back with the uh, play there and uh, the Paul shot Sweeney. from uh, distance and uh, has it gone over yes it has Paul McSweeney uh, Brian calling it there. Just on, just on Patrick Doyle coming out, I actually read of a, a game in Ulster two weeks ago. One team was 11 points down at half time. They brought out their goalie in the second half. And they actually, he, he had such an effect on the game. Uh, they, got, they got back and they drew the game in the end. Um, the other team didn't know how they actually would uh, manage to, to, to deal with the extra man. Well, I'll tell you, it seems to be rattling a cage a small bit because uh, since he's been out there, <laughs> Knock have won three balls. And uh, chasing after there is Paul O'Connor, and it's gone out for a 45. And uh, well, Pa Doyle, because of his new deployment, won't have too far to come up to take this. 5 11 to 10 points, by the way, is the uh, score with uh, 50 minutes elapsed. So 5 11 to uh, 10 points, and it's uh, Pa Doyle standing over this. And if he converts it, it uh, puts uh, five goals between the sides. Powerful window uh, behind him, as you can see there on the, uh, on the back of the screen. Here comes uh, Doyle, his brother Michael, of course, the uh, cornerback. His uh, dad, of course, uh, was a former goalkeeper with the club as well. He's unfortunately driven that one uh, wide. Uh, his uh, dad, Mike, uh, who's originally from uh, Gwini Gwila. And of course, there's a, a huge connection between uh, Gwini Gwila, Rathmore and uh, Nock Negri. And of course, uh, Gwini Gwila this afternoon. They're in uh, junior championship action in Kerry, playing uh, Bally McCalligat down in uh, Castle Island. I think that game is uh, getting underway around now. But uh, as I said, Patrick Doyle, whose uh, dad is a native of uh, Guinegilla, uh, unfortunately on that occasion, he's uh, effort trailing wide. A lot of uh, Kerry connections, of course, and goalkeeper opting to punch that one out there, well taken by the uh, fullback, Ray Momokan. John Fenton Daly going out as far as uh, McSweeney. Scored that point a few moments ago. John Fenton uh, chipping it in. It looks like they're trying to get the goal. Paul O'Connor punching it back over his head, but that one has uh, gone out wide. So maybe they're uh, getting the word of uh, results el elsewhere and they're just trying everything to get any score possible on the board. Sorry, Brian, for cutting across you there. I mean, the significance here, Cullum, is they're 16 points down today. They went into the game, not in agree, plus three, which means they're going to be minus 13. So realistically, Neva Bon, who are now one point ahead of St. Vincent's with 10 minutes to go, if they hold that lead, they're going through, along with Kilnamartra, and unfortunately for John Finton Daly and not in agree, they're going out. Chris Omar getting the uh, ball off and running to Kieran O'Donin. O'Donin on the 21, he's got Omar running inside him. Is Omar going to go for a net buster? No, he's opting to take the sensible thing and, and uh, punching it, wide, but he's uh, wide. driven it wide. Another let off there. The shout is go, go, go from the uh, Knock and Green mentors in front of us to uh, Pad Oil, the goalkeeper, to get the ball out as quickly as possible. Chasing after it is Keelan Buckley, the captain of the side. Leading by example, first time down as far as John Finton Daly through the hands though, and the ball had gone out over the sideline, and that is uh, a let off there for uh, Kilimatra, and it's uh, Graham O'Mokan who goes to uh, Nulligolera. The fullback rides his way out of two, three tackles, and uh, they're waiting for it. Is that uh, workaholic Mihala Dasuna? Right on the halfway, putting it up to uh, Garodo Goli, dropping it. 
And uh, latest I have is uh, McCroom four goals and eleven points. Nemo Rangers five goal, yeah. four goals and uh, five points. Back with the action here, and it's uh, racing on as Kieran O'Donnell has a man inside him. Is he going oh, to opt across? And a, oh, what an interplay between the the in rushing wing forward and the wing back. Well, was, we saw a similar thing uh, that was Danny Cooper and himself playing the passes between them. We saw a similar thought of a square ball in Austin Stack Park about three weeks ago yeah. between uh, Austin Stacks and Dr. Crokes. But I think if the player is in the square as the ball is being played back, it does count. But I, thought, uh, I think isn't the rule if you're waiting, you have to be moving into the square. If you're but, it, but if you have started the move which I think was the case in that case. Well, we can check through. Uh, we'll get uh, one of our referees there on the uh, the hotline as we're watching a shot sailing out wide and hands to the heads there from John Finton Daly uh, down there. But the end result anyway was the yeah. ball ended up in the back of the net. I'd have to go back to my man there, Kieran O'Donnell again. Cut through um, and other players may have taken on that shot themselves and be somewhat greedy, but he decided he'd pass to Tiger to Cochra, Cochra uh, when he could have easily just slotted the goal himself. Actually, uh, I have a funny feeling, and Tony, you can correct me if I'm wrong here. Is there a Kerry man training this Kilimarter team? Uh, yeah, John DeWire. Yeah, there's a there's a, a real look, and, and not being uh, downing our, our own county or anything like that, but there's a real look of Kerry football style about the Kilimarter team. Kieran O'Donnell racing off, no one inside him. Still, O'Donnell has got a, a runner, and that's uh, the man wearing number 24 is going to go inside to the uh, centre forward, and oh taken down unceremoniously but the referee says uh, play on as the ball comes back to Odesuna Odesuna drops it in but easily taken by the uh, goalkeeper there substitute uh, on there is it uh, Sean O'Callaghan who's on there for uh, Kilimatra we'll check that in a few moments time but again there was uh, Tygo Cocker who uh, scored that uh, goal a few moments ago yeah it's Sean O'Callaghan Sean O'Farray Oh, ops to go, uh, boot the ball there and uh, it's worked out perfectly. Well, almost it did uh, as uh, Michael Mahoney was uh, under uh, Mihala Dasuna, who dropped it. Gary O'Connor, his uh, father, Niall, of course, uh, a legend of uh, Knocknagri football, going into his other uh, uh, on-runner there, taking a heavy blow there was uh, the wing forward, Fenton O'Connor, who's gone to ground. Interesting to see will the ref uh, continue play on there as uh, Dennis O'Connor is trying to get the uh, shot off into the corner. Don't think he was uh, endeavouring to get it down there, but uh, John Fenton Daly is uh, recycling it back, uh, working it so all the way back to Michael Doyle and Doyle, the cornerback from about uh, 40 yards, has taken uh, taken it upon himself to have a go, and he's uh, put it over the uh, the bar. And all the while, Fenton O'Connor is still down on the ground, uh, receiving treatment after that uh, blow there. Looks like he's uh, afternoon could be could be over or is he just uh, more winded as he's holding on to his chest there. Colin, we're moving into the last five minutes in all the other games and some of the other groups in fairness at this stage. There's a very intriguing situation developing in Group C where Canturk are winning 4-14 to 15 points against Gabriel Rangers. That could actually see them topping the group over Nemo and Canturk. It'll go down at the moment. At the moment, Nemo are plus five. At the moment, Canturk are plus eight as scores stand. So Nemo could actually end up going from the top of the group to not qualifying at all. Incredible drama right across the grounds and we'll keep you updated. Thanks to Tony as well for doing the, the mathematics on that. That's it. Daniel O'Donnell. Nola Galera doing great work back there again. Tygo Carker involved in the goal there a few moments ago with uh, Kieran O'Donnell. Odasuna, Sean O'Callaghan, all the way back to Sean O'Farray. I think uh, Kill the Match will be just happy to wind down the clock here, and if they get a score, they do, and if they don't, they won't be too worried with the, the gap that they've built up. I must say it's been a relatively clean affair this afternoon. I think we only had the uh, the one yellow card shown. Latest we're getting in the uh, other game in this group, it's uh, Neva Bond, two goals and 12 points. St. Vincent's, two goals and 11. Just a point between the sides with about 27 minutes gone. And just at the other end of the ground here, we've had the ball flying over the bar from John Fenton Daly. But uh, I think the way he's uh, got his head in his hands, that uh, that wasn't 
the intention. He was looking to put it past the goalkeeper, Anton O'Connell, but has uh, driven it over. And the uh, Knocknagree goal drought continues at that uh, far end of the field. Bit of cramp, I think, uh, developing amongst uh, one or two players. We're still seeing treatment over there for uh, O'Donin on the far side of the field. After that heavy blow a few moments ago, he's uh, still being uh, assessed. And the latest I have now, it's all level between uh, Vincent and Neva Bon. And I'm told in my earpiece that uh, if that's the case, then Knocknagri would still be in the championship, regardless of the final scoreline here. So drama aplenty. I'm sure that word is uh, filtering through down there as well. The uh, Knocknagri lads down here to the uh, right hand side. Huge. Uh, Huge social media presence too by the club. I must say, huge assistance by the two clubs in preparing for the uh, match and the Muila Buikas to the uh, PROs and the secretaries and everyone involved for all their assistance uh, with us uh, during the week. And also a huge thank you to uh, Moran Abbey for uh, sending us up here on our little gantry here in their uh, wonderful facility. And uh, huge thanks to all the clubs who are working very hard to facilitate us at matches that they're only hosting. Um, in terms of uh, setting up uh, gantries and scaffolding and everything like that. And the lads down in uh, Inneskeen are doing likewise uh, tomorrow afternoon for us. And a huge thanks to uh, Dan and uh, all the team down there for their uh, huge work. And it's hugely appreciated. Nola Golera opting to go back to his uh, wing back to Danny O'Connell. And O'Connell has fouled there an arm around the neck from uh, Keelan Buckley, who was uh, trying to stop the run at source. Uh, play now has uh, kind of gone really slow. Nola Golera now to uh, Donna McLaughlin. And uh, off we come here at uh, speed is the uh, wing back. He's a, he's a bit of a flyer. Uh, the pass, though, was uh, overcooked. Mihala the sooner. I don't think I realised he was uh, due to be the recipient. He needed to turn on the afterburners to get to that one, but uh, some turn of pace by the cornerback, uh, all the same. In front of us here, it's uh, James Dennehy. They're all going through the hands here with the uh, cornerback first time from uh, Gary O'Connor, dropping it, but uh, too much pace. And despite the uh, best intentions of Paul O'Connor, he couldn't keep uh, that one in. Gary, of course, uh, Father Niall, a huge hero in the club, as I mentioned. You know, if the Vincent's game and... Um Never won if it finishes up the way it's going at the moment and not agree qualify here. They'll find it very hard within two weeks to lift themselves to the next game because this performance has been quite poor. They've been so open, they've given away so much. Uh, they've, they've shown, you know, to be fair, after the water break in the first half, they showed a bit of spirit, but since then, they haven't shown too much. And uh, I think, you know, they're really, really going to find it difficult if they are to go on the championship. Keenan Buckley did the dirty work there to get the ball, and uh, off it comes here. In front of us is with the uh, wing forward, Fenton O'Connor. Shot by Fenton, well saved again by the goalkeeper. He's done very well there, twice to deny O'Connor. Nolly Golera cleared it up, and it's out as far as Danny O'Connell. They're out on the uh, far side, and they're just going to take their time, work right across the field. This time it's uh, Kieran O'Donin that's on it. O'Donin has a runner inside him if he wants, and that's the uh, wing forward there, uh, Tygo Corker. Ops to go back and uh, that for the second time in a row, Michal Adesuna is uh, cut out there as uh, the defender rushed out in front of him, James Dennehy. Out with McSweeney. Colin, things are, I think, literally going to go. We'll watch this uh, move to its conclusion to see can Nat Negri get in for that goal. Fenton O'Connor and it's uh, punched over uh, in the end, not under. It looked to be Paul O'Connor, I think, that uh, got up on that occasion to uh, apply the uh, finish to it. But... Uh, Everything they're trying to get it under the crossbar just isn't coming off. Yeah, it was uh, Paul O'Connor who uh, came on and impressed as a sub against uh, Neva Bond in the last outing. It's um, it's going to go literally right down to the wire. Nemo, who at one minute there looked as if they were going out or after getting a goal four minutes into injury time. In their game against McCroom, they're still trailing by two points. The goal score from uh, Ronnie Dalton. But... It might put them back in the mix. Daniel O'Donin is on the ball. Still Daniel O'Donin opts to go short to another O'Donin, I think. And it's in the back of the net. Yes, it is from Shane O'Donin, the captain of the side. And a captain's finish into the back of the net. But uh, the uh, full forward, Daniel O'Donin, carrying the ball about 60 yards there. No one laying a glove on him. Just had the simple job then, passing it off to Shane O'Donin. And he slammed it home from about five yards. The one thing I, you'd, have to, you'd have to think with Kilimarter, what I, what I like about them, there's no, there doesn't seem to be, there seems to be very little ego here in the forwards in terms of banging goals themselves. Dan in there could have easily scored that goal himself, but he decided he'd, he'd pass it off 
and that's, that's that's two in a row really because the last goal as well could have been passed could have been the shot so um you know i think that's a good sign of a team when they share the ball around Danny O'Connell working it back to Christo Omar and he's gone right across the field there. Out as far as uh, Kieran O'Donin. Back to uh, Omar. Yeah, the word is filtering down here on my right hand side to the uh, Knocknagree bench and the update on the Vincent's game. I'll be tracking that. Praying for Neva Vaughan or to slip up. And that, that is the latest we're hearing now. It's uh, St. Vincent's who are going to point up on Neva Bond. We'll keep tracking on that three with injury. three minutes into injury time. If that remains the case, then these two teams here in front of us will be progressing from this group. The drama, the excitement. You don't have to go to uh, La Rochelle or Toulon to uh, get shock <laughs> results. Just stay with the Bon Secours Cork. Premier Intermediate Football Championship and that is the final whistle here. The result we knew, I suppose, long in advance here. I think we knew it after the first uh, two or three minutes, uh, Brian, but uh, Tony's going to keep on the phone here and I'm sure the uh, knock Negree bench below us, it'll, it'll be like the, the, the famous old days of people gathering around the wireless to get the uh, updates on the, uh, on the other games. Um, well... Are we yeah. looking at potential county champions here? I think it's going to take a very, very good team to beat Kil Kilnamarch, to be fair. Uh, as I said earlier on, Colm, the fact that they've been playing Division 1 now for two, three years has helped them hugely. Uh, you can see they're, they're very, very, very aware of each other. They're very, very uh, in, you know, able to share the ball around. Their style of football is very easy on the eye. Uh, now they weren't tested defensively today, but certainly up front, from midfield forward, actually, they actually look very, very uh, accomplished, you know? Latest we're hearing now is that it is full time in that clash between uh, Neva Bourne and St. Vincent's. Wait for this. Neva Bourne defeated by a point, which means Knocknagree are still in yeah, the championship. Knocknagree are just after getting word there now that's after happening. I can see Jumping Daly just been told that uh, Neva Bourne have been beaten. So he'll put a different slant on what he's going to say to these players here right now. But as you said there a few moments ago, how difficult it is. No, again, can you look at it two ways? It's going to be massively difficult to come back from a game like this or what? Uh, with with somebody like John Finton Daly, how you can use a result like this in the next week or two inside and training to try and turn things around? Yeah, uh, I think, Colin, when you concede seven goals in a football match, I think, you know, it's very, very difficult to, to actually get guys back psychologically and, and confident facing into, uh, probably facing a, one of the better teams in this competition in the next game, whatever way that works out, I'm not quite sure. Um, I think the time frame is very, very short. Um, some people might argue that might be good, but I think having looks like knock degree there for that game, I didn't see enough to say that they can turn this around straight away now. You know, of course, they could prove me wrong here uh, and, and turn, turn one performance, but they seem to have a lot of uh, today, anyway, a, a lot of issues in terms of uh, defending, particularly. Uh, they were quite open, they were quite exposed, um, and I also I felt that they could have been a lot more intense and a lot more physical. Uh, Kilimanjaro are a pure footballing team. They want to move the ball quickly, they want to play good football, and I think, you know, you, you could see there that, that Knock Degree had to stymie me that, and they didn't, and they just stood off them and let them play. And, you know, to get all those components right outside of the psychological confidence piece, I think it's going to be quite difficult for um, Knock Degree to get themselves back ready. Okay, well, let's talk about uh, Kilimanjaro. And I think you made a lovely point there towards the end, Brian. The lack of ego in the yeah, forward line. As yeah. in we've, we've seen the ruination of many teams that yeah. there's, there's the one star marquee forward and he demands everything goes through him. Whereas you could pick any one of the six. And even sure one of the midfielders got in on the goal scoring. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's a very good sign of a, of a, of a, of a well coached team that. You know that you have opportunity in, in terms of forwards, you know, getting their name on the score sheet when the game is done, but still are willing to pass the ball. Like uh, Kieran O'Donnell, uh, Shane O'Donnell, Dan, Dan, Danny O'Donnell, those three players in particular, I, f I felt were, were, you know, w way above the standard that they were playing today, and they were very, they had more time. It was a sign of a very good player column is that you see them having more time on the ball than actually they have, and and those three players in particular. I know you spoke with Michal Dasuna, but he plays a different role for them. 
as a centre forward, he's he's more in around the middle, getting mm. onto ball and then starting the attack. He doesn't seem to. I, I've seen him play where he scored quite a lot of points, but today, looking at him, he's more a playmaker because they have these very fast and, and very good footballers up front, especially in the trio of Nines, um and the other two, Damien O'Hurdle and, and Chris O'Ramar. They're good players as well, but the trio of Nines really, really stood for me. Now, having said that, I was. Uh, particularly impressed with uh, Sean O'Frey at midfield I think he had a very very good hour um, you know he, he dominated around the middle there and he set, set the platform for them but I think they have class forwards they share the ball well they work quite hard too because in the first half there they got one of their goals with Dan O'Donin locked down a shot in his own 14 and ended up uh, assisting to a goal at the other end so you know I think they're, they're very well coached they're very organised they've been playing at Division 1 standard for a long time um, and I think Today's game is going to give them massive confidence um, in terms of who they face next in the quarterfinals or semi-finals. Let's talk defensively as well too. Tygo Cocker and Danny O'Connell were almost up in attack as much yeah. as they were defending. And like, I know he didn't do a massive amount this afternoon, mm. but uh, Nola Golera, just the right place, mm. the right time. We saw that high ball under the crossbar. We saw one of the uh, breaking balls, mm. I think you mentioned in yeah. commentary as well. Yeah. Great to have that bit of experience well, just to anchor things. You know, you call it craft. He has craft in spades. And I think you know if 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 we're you know if I was playing against Noel Leary tomorrow, you know the things that he's very 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 good at. But you know he he he's at the tail end of his career now. You'd have to say, you'd have to think that you know you wouldn't allow him play his own game. Now today he was allowed to play his own game. He was able to drop off his man very very quickly, very easily, sit in front of the two full backs and actually play a very very. Uh, game based on his strengths which is experience and, and reading of the game but as you said none. he was allowed to he was allowed to so if you were playing against Killer March tomorrow one of the things you'd be doing very very quickly is ensuring that Nolan Leary wouldn't be allowed to be a free man and you'd be putting a player on him who's young who's fast who's very very quick Pace. who's going to move him now Killer March obviously will try and counteract that by getting him free but ultimately if, if you were smart enough you would actually end up getting him to mark somebody and I think if you do that you would actually put them back a small bit in terms of the cover that they have in front of their full back line because John Finton Daly certainly showed in the first 20, 25 minutes that he had the measure of, of Graham O'Connor at full back That style of play that uh, killed the match right? is, 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 is it a style that is easy to learn or is that something that takes years? No, and I think there's a bit of me that's asking, um, you know, why Dan O'Donnell hasn't given Cork a shot. Obviously, they see something here that, that appeals to them. Obviously, they see something in their club that, uh, you know, absolutely uh, serves all the needs they have as footballers. And I think, to answer your question, I think that style is something, sometimes it is just a style of a club. But I, I would also think that they look like a team that's very well coached. And I would say over the last three or four years, they look very, 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 very good. I saw them playing against Abolog in the county intermediate final two years ago where they w won in a canter, uh, playing a very similar style of football to this. And I think, uh, you know, this is something that they've built. This is something that they all understand. And the movement of their forward line, uh, the ability of the two lads midfield to actually dominate games, I think, you know, this is something that has, has been a, a piece of work, I would imagine, for a number of years. Because... Uh, I, as I said at the start column, I think this group of players in Kilimartra, um, they're not just happy uh, with you know what they've won so far. I think they see themselves a possibly you know, getting up senior. And they've seen in the league that they can compete, so why not in the championship? And I think that's the carrot that's been dangled in front of them. OK, well, you can hear the uh, applause uh, across the bench there of the uh, Kilimartra camp. And, uh, well, they can rightly applaud what was a seven-star performance here this afternoon. Tony's still crunching the numbers here uh, alongside me. Just to mention what's coming up in the Irish Examiner live stream service uh, this weekend. Tomorrow afternoon, we are at uh, Parky Cueve, and that's going to be uh, the big one, uh, Nemo and Douglas. Well, the big one in that we'll be uh, crunching all the numbers from the Premier Senior Football Championship Games. We'll be doing that in the company of uh, Derek Kavanagh and uh, Conor Coonan. And then at four o'clock, we're heading down to Inneskeen and it's Senior A Football Championship there. O'Donovan Rossa in action against uh, St. Michael's and uh, O'Sheen Langan and Larry Tompkins will be our team down there. So as we're watching the uh, Kilimatra team uh, coming off the field just down to the right, the uh, talk is still going on there from uh, John Finton Daly. I'd love to have an ear to what's going on down there, to be honest with you. Uh, Tony, 
the numbers crunched? KPMG well, uh, have assessed it. Um, I mean, viewers will have to, you know, uh, I, I apologise in advance if anything is wrong. For obviously, we're in a situation where we're trying to d juggle phones, pens, notebooks. What I can tell you is that the number one ranked team that will go through to the quarterfinals is the impressive team we were watching and here today and you've just been discussing, which is Kilnamartra. Six points out of six, uh, Kobe, plus 38 scoring difference um, is, is a serious performance. The second definite semi-finalist is Newmarket. Newmarket ended up beating Napiercig 115 to 27. Um, so they also finish on six points. They're plus 21. I am waiting and I'm, I'm, I'm hedging my bets for a reason here. The way the rankings work, of course, is that the, the first three rankings, Brian, are the three group winners. Now, unless my ma mathematics is awry, and as the many maths teachers who try desperately to knock sense into me will tell you, that is the case. My mathematics would suggest that in Group C, McCroom are actually out even though they beat uh, Nemo Rangers and at one stage they were five ahead of them, Brian, because they've all finished on four points. But that late Nemo comeback where they seemed they were five down, they ended up losing by two, means they still finish on plus ten. Can Turk um, had a good win today and they actually ended up with uh, on plus eight. And I think McCroom, and again, I'm open to correct. correction on this, I stand open to correction, that they actually finish on plus three. Would that actually be right? Well, we're just after, yeah. as you're going through it there, well done to you, Tony. The tables are just after being updated okay, by yeah. the Cork County Board. So we actually have the official S tables there, Tony, so if you want to just run just, through those. Yeah, well, I mean, as I said, how sick must McCroom be? Because they, they were in trouble early on. They had a fantastic comeback. They actually were five points ahead. Myself and Brian were looking at it and we were actually saying we put the mockers on Nemo, talking them up at half time. It looked at that stage as if they were actually going out. But Ronnie Dalton got a late goal. I see Jack Coogan got a late point. They brought it back to two points. And that actually means Nemo topped the group. So they actually go through as the number three ranked team into the video. So number one ranked is Kilnamartra, number two ranked is um, Newmarket. They're the ones that go through to the semis. The quarter finalists after that now will be Nemo Rangers are, are number three ranked. And Canturk, I would look at, are number four ranked. Ahada are number five. And not an agree because the pummeling they took today, they sneak in into the last qualifying place. So again, the quarter finalists in the Premier Intermediate are Kilnamartra 1, Newmarket 2, Nemo Rangers 3, Canturk 4, Ahada 5, Not Nagree 6. There you have it. There well done go. to your maths teachers. I'm sure that they'd be very impressed with your uh, performance uh, on that one. Uh, final words here from this evening? Well, I think the one thing we've established is that, and I think I heard Brian saying it there while I was trying to rummage through my notes, is that it's going to take a serious team to beat Kilnamartra. I mean, I think one of the key points that was made today, um, and it was something that Kevin O'Sullivan said to me during the week, is how much Division 1 football has brought them on. Kobe mentioned it earlier, and, and I know my, and you know that reference to the Kerry County Leagues, by the way, by him was for my benefit, <laughs> because I've always, I've always argued that column in Cork. I've always argued one of the things that frustrates me so much about Cork football is that they just do clubs do not take the county league seriously mm -hmm. and you can develop so much as a side mm -hmm. as you go up the divisions because you're playing better opposition and Kilnamartra have got into the habit of playing division one opposition the best sides in the county whether they be the bars whether it be nemo whether it be castlehaven they're getting used to playing these week in week out so you can see they're clinical when they they're they don't just dominate possession, they keep possession. And when they make opportunities, they convert those opportunities. So they are putting up big scores. They were caught last year. Last year, remember, was their first year Premier Intermediate. My head now, I'm going to say it was actually Canturk or Aerog. It was a very strong team. Kobe caught them in the quarterfinals. Actually, do you know what? I think it was St. Michael's actually beat them. And St. Michael's went on to lose the final, to didn't Aerog. they, to Aerog. Yeah. So they, they did lose... And I think they took something out of that. I think there is a lot of expectation. I remember that package you showed earlier, Colm. The first question I asked Kevin is, there's an awful lot of expectation on Kilnamartra. Is that fair? He thinks that's good. He agrees that they've come an awful long way from where they were. But they're, they're with the big boys now in Division 1 in the County Football League. 
at Premier Intermediate, remember this was the second grade of Cork football, it's now the third grade of Cork football. So they would nearly, I think internally, Kobe, wouldn't they be looking at this saying, we should be winning this? Yeah, I, I said that to Colm earlier on, Tony. I think, I think the, the carrot that's been dangling in front of them is senior football. Mm. And I think uh, looking at them in the league, and I've seen them playing a good few games, they are well there. And I think the, one of the beauties about them, an advantage to have over most of the teams that they're playing in Division 1 is that you know, outside of Ty Corkery training with Cork, nobody else is missing. They have all their players all the time. And if you're coaching a team and you have all your players all the time, you can get, you know, not, 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 not all the time, but you can get that fluidity that this, this team played with today. Yeah. And I think that's a crucial point, that they have everybody all the mm. time. They're very tight. They obviously, as I say, if Dan and these people are um, deciding that they want to play with their club, despite being called up by Cork, over the years, I think it's a sure sign that, that there is that big carapine dangle there. And looking at them today, I think they would fear nobody. If you if you rattle in seven goals of the championship game, you're only waiting for the next game. And the fact that it's not three months away or two months away, it's only two weeks' time, they're coming off this pitch absolutely buzzing. They're waiting to see, uh, you know, they'll find out who they're going to get, obviously. But, mm. um, you know, th I, I, I would think that they'd be thinking, this championship is ours, we can win this, you know? That's a great point. You've actually reminded me of something, Cullum, that I meant to say earlier and I forgot. And it's... Um, they don't have the dual code problem. No. That's, no. that's no. And, and I don't like to use that word yeah. problem. They just don't have the dual issue. And the most remarkable thing Cullum I took away from visiting Kilnamarta last Tuesday night was when they played their AVB game. Remember I said they played two 15 minute games? It was a 15 v 15 and I watched six players come off and sit in the dugout who weren't even starting in a 15 v 15. So in fairness to Kevin O'Sullivan and to John O'Dwyer who was doing a good bit of coaching down there and John O'Dwyer I have to say I regard him very highly as a coach certainly in terms of organising and structuring a team like imagine to have 36 players to play with maybe and actually in fact Kevin actually I think said to me at once that some nights we actually have too many people training but, but they want to involve everybody and he said it's heartbreaking to actually be telling guys you can't even play in an AVB game yeah. but that's the level of in the competition they have in the squad at the moment so Kilnamartra football is in a very good place at the moment and, and it's going to take a good team to stop them Just been told there that uh, Canturk beat Kilnamartra last year Canturk, uh, yeah. St Michael's beat uh, Canturk in the semi-final so thanks to Michael Morrissey in uh, St Michael's for uh, bringing us uh, up on that one uh, also just getting a word in that uh, Gabriel Rangers versus Napiersig uh, will be the relegation yeah. playoff. So thanks to uh, Joe Blake in the Cork County Board for updating us uh, on that. Final word from you? Uh, final word, I think, Colm. I will be, as I said already, I'm extremely impressed with Uh It's my first time seeing him in the flesh this, this season. And I think they've even got better since last year, which is a sure sign of a, of a, a graph on the up. And I think, you know, regardless of who they play here in the, in the next game, um, I think they're straight into semi-final there anyway. won't be a next game for them yeah, yeah, yeah. they're at the quarters first and then they're straight into a semi-final semi just to finish I, I probably I think uh, again, and I presume they couldn't meet Knock Negri on no, telephone I don't, I don't yeah, think they, they can't meet Knock yeah. am I right I mean so I mean again we're putting our necks on the line now because I'm actually not even looking at my notes but the number three ranked team we said was Nemo Rangers yeah. And I think they're going to play Notting Agree now in the quarterfinals. So it'll be Nemo Rangers versus Notting Agree, and it'll be Newmarket, and I had a but who actually can't play because they can't play repeat yeah. pairings. So they're actually now going to have to flip to. those around. Okay. Newmarket and Ahad are in the same group. They don't want repeat pairings. So by my reckoning, if it's three, I need to look. I need to look at my tables now again. But I know if it's who was it again? So would it be Newmarket v Notting Agree? Can't talk for somewhere there. No market have gone into semi final as far as I remember. Sorry, my Sorry. apologies. Yeah. What am I saying? Lamarca I'm completely in wrong. With so it's Cantorp Viahida. Cantorp Viahida, yeah. Yes, and Nemo play Nocknagree. Yeah. Sorry, okay. that's yeah. right. My yeah. apologies. Yeah. Yeah. We'll leave it at that because the heads are <laughs> spinning, <laughs> swimming, <laughs> scrambled at this stage in Moran Abbey. My thanks to uh, Brian Cuthbert on uh, co commentary duties. My thanks to uh, Tony Lean for uh, his mathematical expertise and uh, as well too for uh, our top 14 rugby updates as well. I hope you enjoyed our coverage here this afternoon as much as we enjoyed bringing you these games here on the Irish Examiner live stream free of charge as well too. Two cracking games tomorrow. Premier Senior Football Championship is in Porky Cueve. We'll be watching Nemo Rangers and Douglas and then we're heading down to uh, Enniskeen to the clash of uh, St Michael's and O'Donovan Rossum. That's where we're going to have to wrap up uh, for this afternoon. Thanks to uh, Ben and uh, Derek here alongside me there on uh, the technical side of things. Uh, thanks as well to the uh, clubs for all their assistance and for everyone here in Moran Abbey as well for setting us up. And finally, thank you at home for watching us. We hope uh, you enjoyed the uh, action. 
And we hope to have your company again tomorrow afternoon for that double hel helping of uh, Championship football in the uh, Irish Examiner live stream. From Warren Abbey, good evening. Well done, guys.